All right, here we go. Are you motherfuckers ready for this? Welcome to the podcast, the greatest podcast in the history of mankind. Obama Netflix to everybody out there. I'm your host, Dusty Smith, and it's episode 58. Fuck yes, we did it. It's a team effort. We are amazing, you and I. And tonight we have a great show for you. Apparently a lot of people are tuning in for this shit. Apparently I am a fucking investigative reporter now, and I'm breaking stories and shit. I know how the fuck this happened. I got whistleblowers messaging me, making phone calls, locking shit down, so... That's interesting. So we're going to talk about that tonight. The whole Dave Silverman situation that uh, I am somehow strangely involved in. Didn't see this shit coming. It's weird, man. Every time I think I'm going to have nothing to talk about that's going to top the last show. I mean, how the fuck do you top the fact that the largest and most popular white supremacy website in the world declared PewDiePie their lord and savior? How the fuck do you top that shit? And somehow the universe is like, here you go, Dusty. Here's some even better shit to talk about. So that's fucking awesome. We're going to rock this shit out tonight. But uh, first off. If you like the show, please consider supporting me on Patreon, patreon.com, slash podcast. But the $717, we had a little jump here in the last uh, last episode. I guess people like my expose on PewDiePie, so that's cool. If you enjoy what I do, please consider supporting the show. Uh, I only make money on Patreon and through the Super Chats because my channel is demonetized. So if you don't want to see me keep doing this and you don't want to see me go get a job as a Walmart greeter, which I would rock, man. I would fucking rock a goddamn Walmart greeter job. Welcome to Walmart. I love you. I got that shit down pat. But anyway, I'd rather do this show. So if you like this show, please consider supporting me. And as always, the best way to support me, other than that, Super Chats, live blood of the show, no question dodge, every question answered. If you have questions about Dave Silverman or this whole bullshit sexual assault incident or whatever, Super Chat me. I will read every fucking question. That's awesome. Hey, even Dan's got it. Super Chat, live blood of the show. Hells yeah. Hey, Dusty, are you a vegan or a vegetarian? I'm a vegetarian. I eat mayonnaise and shit. I hadn't worked my way off the cheese yet, but I'm working on it, folks. I am working on it. Thank you for that, both Dan and uh, Icon Nachi. And uh, how's the chat doing tonight? Everybody have a good weekend. Some uh, fucking awesome fan sent me like uh, 35 bucks, which is the amount I needed. I already had some saved up. So they give me the rest of the money I need to buy Borderlands 3. So I'm going to be buying Borderlands 3 tonight and up all night playing that motherfucking shit. Going to get high as a motherfucker after the show's over. But first off, we're going to fucking rock this shit out. Talking about Dave or something. What's up, Jules Black? How you doing? Dusty, you join the fifth column news. All right. I guess that's a uh, bullshit. I like that. <laughs> Welcome to Walmart, Die Trump. I'd probably get fired immediately. Uh, yeah, you guys are making fun of Beth. Beth's looks. I don't really, I'm not into that, folks. I'm not into making fun of people's looks like this. Like, I don't think that's fair. I think there's lots of reasons to uh, shit on Beth that doesn't require you taking cheap shots or a look, in my opinion. So, uh, I don't know. I'm not your dad. Do what you want. But that's not my thing. So, uh, yeah, less of that, please. All right. Well, let's just jump right into the fucking show. Let me put my headphones on and we'll get this shit going. So, um, craziness, craziness. All right. So, first of all, I want to start out talking about this. A lot of people have accused me of whitewashing the cancel culture on the left, cancel culture. I hate that, but I hate saying that or calling it that, but we're just going to call it that um, for the sake of this episode. But I'm not doing that at all, folks. I admit there's lots of fucking problems on the left. The left is full of people, and people are shit, right? The left and the right are both full of people, and people are just you know, monkeys or apes or whatever, you know, so we're dumb. So obviously there's a, people that, a lot of people on the left that judge too quickly, that are too quickly to throw people under the bus, that are too quickly to hate on people, just like they're on the right. My problem with the whole thing is, is there's this narrative going around out there that it's mostly the left doing this, and the left is worse at this, and, and the right doesn't get accused of this at all. This is basically a... a something that's used to bludgeon over the head the left with. And here's a good example of what I'm talking about. This is just a, one of the many, many, many lists on the Internet of conservative boycotts. This is how, many, how much shit they've been boycotting this last couple of years. Uh, four noggins, they insulted the president. Eight tracks pushed cuck agenda on customers. Uh, Amazon, owned by Jeff Bezos, supports DACA. Oh, God. Apple, facility, uh, facilities donations to Southern Poverty Law Center, a bias lifting organization. Oh, God. Uh, Beth Bad Beyond dropped Trump merchandise, probably because it didn't sell. Who gives a shit? Ben and Jerry spoke against Trump. Ooh. So you can see, like, they've been canceling fucking people all over the place. That's all really boycotts are, right? So this narrative that it's only the left doing it is bullshit. But when I think the left has gone too far and when I think there's cancel culture in the left, I have no problem fucking calling that shit out. Now, whether this David Silverman th- case is, uh, is, is one of those times, that's not for you to decide. Th- there are many people on both sides who think that Dave... I don't know if you can say got what he deserved, um, because I think after I get done explaining to you what happened, I think a lot of people are going to think that uh, 
Dave got the shaft, right? There were things that were said about Dave that are clearly not true. A lot of the sexual assault claims made against Dave are, are clearly the evidence shows are not true. Now, whether he did anything wrong or not, I'm going to lay it all out. You guys can make your own decision. Um, maybe he did deserve to be fired by the, uh, uh, what is it, the American Atheist Association. Um, I think he probably did. I think what he did probably justifies their firing of him. But like I said, do I think his life should have been completely destroyed for this? Based on the evidence I've seen, probably not. Although I wasn't there, and so I don't really know what happened. So I just want to say this, folks. I'm a moron. I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. Everything I say here is just my opinion. You should go out and research all this stuff for yourself, and you should form your own opinion. Don't just take my word for any of this bullshit, right? Um, and I want to say this to make sure I don't get sued because uh, it's a very litigious subject here. So I'm just giving my opinion. It's all my fucking opinion. I don't know, okay? So keep that in mind. Um, the second thing I want to talk about is that I take sexual assault very, very seriously. Um, go ahead and load this picture up here. I've had many, many people in my life, many women in my life, uh, be sexually assaulted. In fact, I think every woman in my life has been sexually assaulted because I ask, you know, and, and they all have stories. My sister was roofied. Uh, I've told this story before. My mom was raped when I was a baby. Um, we were in the car with her going somewhere, and this guy basically pulled up next to her and was flashing his lights and stuff. And she thought she had a flat tire or something. She didn't know what was wrong. She pulled over. And while me, I was a little baby. I was like maybe six months old, and my brother was a little kid. He was like five or something. We were in the car. And uh, he pulled her over. He grabbed her out of the car he, with a knife, and he took her back to her car, and he raped her. Um, now, she had that motherfucker put in jail because you don't fuck with my mama. But uh, so my roommate in Denver, she was raped while I was in Denver. So I just I have it. I, I take this shit very fucking seriously. And I believe that in our society, there is rape culture in, uh, in America. It's all over the world, of course, but especially in America. Um, and rape culture takes so many different forms. And uh, but let me just give you one example. The rate that women report rapes to, compl the, to police in Sweden is much fucking higher than it is in the United States. And the reason that is is because of their society, you know, their social programming. They're much more comfortable with the police. They trust the police much more. And uh, their society also doesn't demonize sex and women to the degree of our society with the puritanical Christian bullshit we have in this society. So they're much, much more likely to go report these fucking crimes, which makes it, you know... It, if you know that women are more likely to report these crimes, you're much less likely to commit it. And uh, the fact that our country doesn't embrace women enough to make the majority of them feel like they're going to be believed or... It's not even not being believed. A, a lot of times they fear that they're going to be blamed. Um, you were at the wrong place at the right, wrong time. You were having rough sex. You were doing something you weren't supposed to be doing. It's your fault. And so... This is part of rape culture. And like I said, this is only one small example of rape culture, but it, it, it is an example of rape culture, and it's a very big problem in our society. And I take it very fucking seriously. And so when we're talking about subjects like this, we have to be very, very careful. I'm going to try to do my best to be as careful with the subject as I possibly can and to be, uh, to be as sensitive with it as I can. But at the same time, I'm going to tell the truth as far as I see it, as far as I've researched it. It doesn't mean I'm right. It just means this is how I see it. This is my opinion on it. And I'm going to try to, you know, uh, navigate these dangerous waters the best I possibly can. So, anyway, with that said, let's get started with the story. So, you guys might remember, uh, I guess it was 2015, maybe, 2016, I can't remember exactly what it was. Um, I got in sort of, uh, I mean, I guess I can just show you here. I, I got in a, a kerfuffle with uh, Matt Delahoney, right? Um, basically, what happened was... Matt Dillon and his wife had posted something on the internet about racism and about how racism is power, power plus prejudice equals, uh, you know, racism, um, which is the definition of systemic racism. It's not the definition of regular racism. So we got an argument about that and she blocked me and whatnot. And then uh, her husband, Dillahoney, her husband at the time, they're not married anymore, but her husband, Matt Dillahoney, took a big issue with it. He basically called me an idiot. He said I was too stupid to debate. He called me a jackass. He blocked me and... Uh, I wasn't happy with that, to be quite honest with you. I was kind of pissed at that. And uh, so I decided to be a fucking giant dickhead. Um, and I decided to say something that was true as far as I, as far as I know. It, it, this is my opinion on what happened. But I shouldn't have said it out loud. And uh, I was just trying to needle him about an incident that happened between him and me and his wife at an atheist convention. Um, this atheist convention right here, this happened in Denver, where they came to Denver and uh, put on a little convention. It was a nice convention. I got comp tickets, so I went out and checked it out and whatnot. 
And um, when I was at this convention, I got to the feeling that this woman, Beth Presswood, who was Matt Delahunty's wife, was sexually interested in me. And uh, now, it's possible that I completely misread the situation. 100% possible. But what I will tell you is, is after we left there, the first thing I told my friend, Nate Jones, Nate Jones is one of the guys I've talked about in the show before. He's missing right now. He's been missing for over a year, and I presume he committed suicide, but we can't find out what happened to him. Anyway, he was my designated driver. The first thing I told him when we were in the car was, those guys are definitely swingers, and she was trying to have sex with me, or she's trying to gauge my interest in her. And uh, I'm, I'm, hopefully this won't come off as braggartly, but in the year I was single, I had a lot of experiences with women, and I got to be a pretty good judge of when they were interested in me and not interested in me, and you could tell by their body language and the side glances and the way they look, and... And I could tell by the dynamic between her, her and her husband, Matt, that they were swingers. And I had no idea at the time. Like, nobody had told me that period. And now, I've since found that that was true, you know. Um, it's just been told that these atheist conventions are like, you know, swinger Disneyland. Everybody's fucking everybody at these atheist conventions, right? Um, but I kind of felt like that was what was going on at the time. So I said it. Um, and I shouldn't have said it. I was just being a fucking dickhead, just putting that dirty laundry out there just because, you know, I was just trying to be edgy. You know, it was one of my, part of my edgy shitlord days. And uh, I was being a fucking dick about it. This picture got taken of me and Beth, <laughs> me arrogant and shit. And uh, so anyway, uh, I took a lot of shit. A lot of people were like, no, Dusty, that is impossible. This woman could never be attracted to you. How would this woman ever want to have sex with you, you arrogant asshole? And maybe, maybe I'm wrong, but eh. So anyway, um, Matt got mad, and uh, oh yeah, this is this is me dodging that shit. I dodged all that shit like fucking Neo and bullets. I saw that shit come, and I was like, no thanks, no thanks. Especially knowing now what I know, I realized how much fucking dodged bullets I dodged. But I, it was like never even close to happening, so I was never gonna have sex with her. So it wasn't really a problem. Anyway, um, so Matt got mad, and Matt went on, um. The Drunken Peasant Show to discuss it. Show by- well, this is my first. I made a video about it. Um, I made a video talking about me and the Matt Del- Delahunty situation, which I called Matt Delahunty versus Dusty Smith, where I explained the entire fucking thing. And uh, so then Matt was upset about it, and so Matt went on the Drunken Peasants. This was back when TJ so and uh, she has no poker face, and and um, Paul were still on the show, and, and TJ's brother. Um, and so he refused to go on the show if I was allowed on there to debate him and talk about this. Uh, so I was not allowed on. I went on the very next week to discuss this. And so he was on there. And he basically said, I was full of shit. There is no possible way that she could have ever been attracted to me or wanted to have sex with me at all. That's what he said. Um, so anyway, uh, that was all fine. We had our little fight over that shit. And it was like... It wasn't any, any of that big deal. It was just ba- basic drama bullshit, right? And it passed and whatnot. And so uh, I didn't think I'd hear anything more about it. I actually, a, a year later, I apologized to Matt publicly about this. Now, he didn't accept my apology. He basically said, fuck you, which is fine. You know, when you apologize to somebody, they don't owe you an acceptance of an apology. You know, you apologize because you legitimately feel bad about what you did, not because you hope to gain something from the other person. And so that's why I apologize. And he didn't accept it, which is fine, you know. Um, But I felt bad that I said all that shit in public. I don't think I should have said that. I think it was immature of me to say that, but I did. So I apologize, and I didn't think anything more would come of of this. I thought, you know, it was just water under the bridge and whatnot. So, now that I told you that story, let's start over and talk about the Dave Silverman situation. All right, so for those of you who don't know who fucking Dave Silverman is, Dave Silverman is uh, the former president of the, uh, I think it's the American Atheist Association, or uh, American Atheist or whatever. President of American Atheist, that's what it is. And um, as you can see here, I, I made this uh, back in, I think, 2015, and I made a folder called Personal Heroes, and it only has two people in it, Dave Silverman and Matt Dillahunty. <laughs> You're me and Matt together, and uh, Matt's actually way taller than me. I'm wearing my tall shoes to make me look taller, so, uh, and this is uh, Steve Hill, who was like six foot seven or ten or something like that, real tall guy who makes us both look really short. So anyway, um, and then there's Dave Silverman. And this is what I had to say about Dave Silverman back in 2014. I thought I'd make a folder and share some of my personal heroes, and I thought I'd start off with David Silverman. I fucking love David Silverman. This guy is such a good leader and a representative for atheism. In fact, he is so good that I'm amazed he is even real. I have so little faith in the leadership of anything that I don't even expect greatness from our atheist leaders. But that's just what we have in David Silverman. Total greatness. So shout out to you, Dave. Keep up the awesome shit. And I 
that's about as big of a compliment as I can give anybody, right? Um, was a huge fan. Think he was and is still most likely. He hasn't like been a leader in the atheist community for a while, but an amazing speaker for atheism. He went out and he tackled O'Reilly. He was on all the talk shows and he fucking killed it every time he went out. And I do think the atheist community is much less without him being at the head of it. You know, we needed strong leaders at the helm of it. And, uh, they all got taken away one by one, and there's very little that we had to look up to now. Matt Dillahunty, but, you know, we don't look up to Matt Dillahunty anymore because of what happened with the whole transphobe shit, right? So it's fucked. Shit got fucked, right? So that's what I had to say about him. Um, and then this happened. Well, I guess I'll say this. Those of you who don't know who he is, you may recognize him from this meme. This is a really popular meme that went around in 2014, 2015. And this is from his appearance on um, the... Uh, Bill O'Reilly show, which I'll show you in case you never saw it. This is, uh, you might remember the whole, uh, the tides go in, the tides go out, Bill O'Reilly argument for why there was God, and that's why he made that face, like, what the fuck are you talking about, you goddamn idiot? So here it is if you have never seen it. Go to church and you get on your knees and you pray to an Correct. invisible man in the sky. Invisible man in the sky. And you don't think that's a scam? No, I don't. You look uh, you at know, a and I'll tell you why. a man that was you know, built by a man? I'll tell you why it's not a scam, in my opinion, uh -huh. all right? Tide goes in, tide goes out. Never a miscommunication. You can't explain that. You can explain why the tide goes tide in. Tide goes in, yeah. tide goes out. See, the out. water, the tide comes in, and it goes out, Mr. Silverman. Uh, maybe it always comes in. on top of Mount Olympus out. who's making the tides go in and no, out. No, no, but you can't explain it. Uh, turns out we can't explain it. It's like moons and gravity and shit, right? I mean, I ain't that smart, but I think scientists can explain that pretty good. Anyway, so, uh, yeah, love me some Dave, and Dave, you know, became popular, popular meme on the internet because of that shit. So, then what happened? Uh, yeah. Uh, in 2018, he got fired from the uh, American Atheist because sexual assault allegations came out. And I think there was also allegations about some kind of uh, financial improprieties, but I looked into that, and I couldn't find any evidence of that. I don't think anything ever came of that. They didn't prove that he did anything wrong financially, so that seemed like that was bullshit. Was, and I could be wrong. If anybody else out there has information that David Silverman actually did do something financially wrong, please send me that information, and I will update the record. But I couldn't find it, so I think that part was bullshit. But the sexual assault allegations really did him in, in my opinion. So let me read you uh, the BuzzFeed article. And this BuzzFeed article was really the, uh, the nail in the coffin for Dave. This is what everybody read, and afterwards everybody thought Dave was a sexual predator, right? He was hated. He was ostracized by his friends. Uh, lost his job, wasn't able to get a job anywhere because, you know, number one, he's one of the most popular atheists in the world. And as another one of the most popular atheists in the world... I can tell you it's really hard to get work if you're online and, you know, saying that God doesn't exist and stuff uh, and saying fuck God and shit like that. And two, of course, you just Google him and he's got these Me Too allegations of him being a sexual predator and nobody's going to hire this dude. So David Silverman, a firebrand atheist with a knack for generating publicity for his cause, has been abruptly fired as president of the American Atheist, one of the leading secular organizations in the U.S. The group's board held an emergency meeting Thursday evening and unanimously voted to fire 51-year-old Silverman based on explosive and written allegations of sexual assault and undisclosed conflicts of interest, BuzzFeed News learned. And like I said, I looked up the undisclosed conflicts of interest and I couldn't find any evidence of that, that sounds like it was bullshit, but I don't know. Uh, last night, the American Atheist Board of Directors voted to terminate David Silverman as the president of American Atheist. The group said in a statement released Friday, the board made its decision after reviewing allegations raised regarding Mr. Silverman's conduct, the statement said. The board also said it intends to cooperate with any future investigations. Uh, let's see. Obviously, he denied it. Let me skip forward to what the actual accusations were. Basically, just talking about who he is, all right? Mm hmm. Like many other communities in the Me Too era, the atheist movement is undergoing a reckoning over the treatment of women in its ranks. In February, BuzzFeed News exposed allegations of sexual harassment against other prominent atheists, the physicist Lawrence Krauss. In the wake of that story, two women told BuzzFeed News that they were assaulted by Silverman. They each filed written complaints to American atheists this week. Now, one thing I will say about this, I watched uh, Dave Silverman's video. And that's not it. Uh, I had it up while ago. There it is. Um, and he, he seemed to be defending Lawrence Krauss. And before you defend Lawrence Krauss, I would watch, uh, what is it? Christina, what is her name? Christina Rad. Christina Rad put out a video about how uh, Lawrence Cross kind of groped her one time, and it's obvious she's telling the truth. So if he did that to her, chances are the other one may be telling the truth. I don't know, but like I would make sure that you know before you defend him and that. And that's just my opinion about it. So anyway, uh, in one of those complaints, a woman described a hotel room party held at the end of 2015 American Atheist Convention in Memphis. So I just want to say. Um, 
all this was made anonymous at this point, and uh, even David Silverman is still keeping who this person is anonymous. But I've looked into it, and I've been told by Dave Silverman's people that the lawsuit has already been fought, filed, and the names are already public. And then I also did my investigative journalistic work, and I verified the name of this person with several other people. So the only reason I am making this public is because it's already public. If it wasn't public, I wouldn't be putting this out there, or if I wasn't under the impression it was public, I wouldn't be putting this out there. But... Uh, as far as I know, the lawsuit in New Jersey has been filed now, and this stuff is public. So it's already out there, and that's why I'm reporting on it. And um, it turns out that who he's talking about is this woman, Beth Presswood, who is Matt Delahunty's uh, ex-wife. They were married at the time this happened, of course. So uh, keep that in mind as I read all this stuff. When they talk about R, supposedly they say uh, R is her first initial or is her initial, but it's not. You know, I don't know. She just said that, I guess. But so when they mention R, we're talking about Beth Presswood here. As far as I know, that's what... That's what's been said to me by multiple people on the inside. So, um, in one of those complaints, a woman described a hotel room party held at the end of 2015 American Atheist Convention in Memphis. This is right around the time, too, that stuff with me and her happened. Uh, she used her name in the confidential complaint, but because of concerns about hostility experienced by other women who have made allegations of sexual misconduct against prominent atheists, she asked BuzzFeed to, news to, to use her first initial R. It's not her first initial. I, I don't think so, unless she has another name that's not Beth Presswood. Um, she and Silverman had known each other for years, and he flirted with her throughout the evening, she wrote in, in the complaint. After the other guests left, R. wrote that Silverman asked her to join him in smoking marijuana on the roof. But before they left the room, he suddenly forced himself on her. He physically pressed me to the wall and began to kiss me forcefully, grabbed my breast, and put his hand into my leggings where there was actual penetration of my vagina, she wrote. R. believes Silverman knew she was interested in BDSM and wrote that he began using insulting language, calling her a dirty little whore. He then pushed her to her knees where his penis briefly made contact with my mouth, she wrote. R. got her got her feet and said no, she wrote. Silverman then lightly slapped her face and said, you don't get to say no to me. And at that point, R. said the widely used BDSM safe word red, which stopped him, and then she left. The next day, R. took photographs of bruises where she says Silverman had grasped her, and these pictures were included in her complaint to the American Atheist. Two prominent atheists confirmed to BuzzFeed News that R. told them about the incident in the days after it happened. Uh, so, guilty, right? Fucking Dave Silverman, sexual predator. Case closed! Fuck you, Dave! But, turns out, uh, there's more to the story. Um... I've reviewed the evidence, and what is said here is not true. Not my fault. I'm just the messenger. I'll show you in a minute. There are many people that have come forward with the evidence against this. This is not true. Now, I have no idea if this is what she actually told BuzzFeed or not. I assume it is, but I know like publications like Colette would just make shit up or would just add, embellish it to their stories and whatnot. So I don't know how much this she actually said of this, but I'm going to just assume that she actually did say this to BuzzFeed, and uh, if she did, she wasn't telling the truth here. Now, I just want to say this, folks, to be very careful about this. Just because a woman lies about being sexually assaulted, or she lies about the uh, details of her sexual assault, does not mean she was not sexually assaulted. It doesn't mean that at all. Sometimes women lie about the details of their sexual assault because they're embarrassed about the actual details. They don't think they're going to be believed. They think they're going to be shamed. And so they still want the person they believe assaulted them to be punished, but they lie about the details. Now, I'm not saying that's what happened here. I had no fucking idea. I'm just saying we have to be very careful about this because, you know, just because she lied about it doesn't mean she wasn't. But what we do know is she lied about it, you know? She hasn't publicly told the truth about this, in my opinion. In my opinion. Please don't sue me. And we know that she has lied about some things and Dave has told the truth about some things. That's what we know so far. That's what the evidence suggests. Now, whether Dave is lying about some things and whether, you know, she actually was sexually assaulted in that hotel room, none of us were there. I wasn't there. The only thing I know is that Dave was there and she was there and only the other two know what really happened in that hotel room. But she hasn't been honest about what happened Yes, yet. She hasn't been publicly honest about it. We do know that much. And I'll, I'll go up the evidence in a minute. Um, so... And then there was another uh, a girl that basically said that she was attracted, to, or I guess Dave was hitting on her or something, and she was wanting a job with the American Atheist, and so uh, Dave had sex with her, and she thinks that Dave was uh, using her interest in getting a job to have sex with her, and she claims that she was too drunk to consent. And Dave has put out pictures that show this girl actually came and sat next to him at the Atheist Convention. He said that she uh, told him that she was a good type of stalker, 
Um, apparently, she also sat next to him, had dinner, uh, and she was very flirtatious and, and, and obviously wanted to have sex with him. And he says that he told her, no, you, there's no job openings. You're not going to have a job here. So if we have sex, it's not going to be about having a job. And she was okay with that. But she claims that she was too drunk to consent. I, like I said, I wasn't there, but the evidence seems to suggest that Dave may be telling the truth here. Um, and I guess they went back to his hotel room and uh, he didn't have a condom. So he was like, uh, can we just have anal sex? And she was like, sure, let's have anal sex. And like, I ain't really into that anal sex stuff very much, but I didn't know it was that easy. I didn't know you could just be like, hey, I don't have a condom. You want to do it in the butt? And girls would be like, yeah, sure, why not? Take my butt. And so uh, I guess Dave got it like that. Well, a lot of people don't understand about these atheist conventions. This is something I said back when I was talking about how I thought Beth Presswood was trying to gauge my interest for a sexual encounter is that these atheist conventions are like a, a meat market, right? People go there just to fuck the shit out of each other. And also, I've mentioned this kind of before, that there are a lot of women out there who are what you call atheist groupies, who have this thing where they want to have sex with all the prominent people in the atheist community. Um, I have encountered these women before. Um, I would not be surprised if me and David Silverman have had sex with the same woman. Because um, that's just how it is, right? A lot of women throw themselves at you and i'm not saying this is what happened folks i'm just telling you my experiences i have no idea what happened here i'm just trying to explain it the best way i can all right so anyway um the, the second accusation with the girl who said she was too drunk to have sex and what it doesn't it, it seems like he's being honest here that doesn't seem like a big deal to me i don't want to belittle it in case you know i'm wrong but at the same time that's only my opinion about it so the beth presswood situation is the main accusation we're going to focus on because that is the one that's the most damning um you know she's accusing him of sexually assaulting her and violating her and pushing her to the wall and kissing her and trying to finger her and whatnot um so anyway turns out that ain't true um as far as my opinion goes dave put out a video i, I guess he is uh hasn't been doing very well this whole thing seems to have destroyed him as you can imagine, when you get accused of something like this and all your friends abandon you and you lose your job and you're unable to seek employment and, you know, you, you feel alone and you feel like everybody hates you and you feel like they hate you for something you didn't even do. Like, if he didn't do it, I'm just saying, if he didn't do it, I wasn't in the room. I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> I have no idea, folks. It's possible that he went too far. She was uncomfortable with it. That's possible. I wasn't there. You weren't there. I don't know. But let's say he's telling the truth. I can understand why he's so fucking depressed. I can understand why he was suicidal. He mentions being suicidal here. And uh, so I'm just going to play a little bit of this video, and then I'm going to tell you basically what happened because the video is like, you know, two hours long. I'm not going to play the whole video for you. I'm just going to play a small clip for you where he's discussing um, basically she's lying about the whole thing. Basically, she pursued him, and there's eyewitnesses that have come forward and say that they saw this happen, that she was the one actually kissing him. She was the one pursuing the flirtation with him. And... Uh, Despite what she says about going to go to the roof and smoke pot and him sexually assaulting her before that, the evidence seems to suggest that, no, they had some kind of uh, consensual sexual encounter. They went up to his hotel room, and uh, he's explaining what happened once they got up to the hotel room. I'm going to play a small clip of this, and you guys can check it out. The sub wants to hear. Right. That's the way... That's the way, or, and doing to the sub what the sub wants done to them. That's that's the idea. Mm -hmm. So she's standing in front of me. She's taking off her clothes, and she says, um, "Call me a whore. Call me a slut. Call me a hole." And she mentions a former lover by name, and she says, "He's not even man enough to call me a slut." Um, keeps this robing, and uh, she, I get her on her knees at the foot of the bed. She tells me again, "Call me a whore." I used to be a prostitute. I should be ashamed for it. And that's when I called her a dirty whore. It's hard because this is a woman who, yes, I called her a whore after she told me to call her a whore twice. Mm. This actually happened. And this is what's been disturbing for me so much. So um, I, I grab her by the hair, I pull her hair back, and I uh, say, I'm going to spit in your mouth, open your mouth. She says, no. I tap her lightly across the face. I say, you're not allowed to say no to me. The no doesn't stop me. Stop doesn't stop me. The safe word is red. Do you understand? She looks at me. She says, I understand. Then I said, open your mouth. I'm going to spit in your mouth. She opens her mouth. 
I spit in their mouth. And I so, say... So for people that don't understand when you're doing this kind of role play, the, the understanding is that no doesn't mean no. For so, a lot of people... That's, that's a like, words of four, yes. A lot of people might think like, what? that's a very triggering phrase to say no doesn't mean no. That, because they're not familiar with the BDSM. But this is the way BDSM works. Right. So okay, you're red, a safe word. Red means no. So I'm holding her like this. Yeah, red means red we got a, no. a problem. Yeah, okay. Red is red is the subs means for engaging their autonomy. And she admitted in the BuzzFeed article that when you did say red, when she did say red, you did stop. Yes, but that was a lie. Okay, then continue. Here's, here's what happened. Okay, continue. Um, I did stop, but that's not the way it worked. Okay. So. Uh, I spat in her mouth and I said, I'm going to do it again. And that's when she said red. Mm. And when she said red, I let go of her hair. And I said, oh, you don't like that, huh? And she says, no, I don't like that. I said, okay, let's do something else. She's okay. And we get up on the bed. So it's not like when she said red, of course, I stopped immediately, but we didn't stop playing. We kept going. Mm. Okay. So basically, that's how I will play that clip. Uh, the whole video is available for you guys. If you want to watch it, exclusive Dave Silverman. Returns, responds to sexual allegations. This is on the uh, Atheist Republic channel. Um, so basically the story he tells is that they were flirting all night um, and making out at different times where they were walking along together. And um, there are multiple witnesses that saw this happen, that saw her kiss him. At one point, uh, he tells her to go into the bathroom and take a picture of her vagina, which she does. And she brings the phone back and she hands it to him. And he looks at it and he sets the phone down. And this other woman, uh, Camilla Harris, who I know. Uh, is that her name, Camilla Harris? I think so. I'll look up a minute. Um, I've met her. She comes up and she grabs the phone before it times out and picks it up because it looks exactly like her phone. It's the same phone case and everything. She's like, hey, this is my phone case. She picks it up and she looks at it and she sees the picture of the woman's vagina on the phone, uh, which was Beth Presswood's phone. And uh, she, I'll show you in a minute, she has gone public and said, yes, this happened. So she has confirmed um, and other, like I said, I'll show the other white witnesses that sh say that they saw them flirting together. They saw uh, Beth, Re Beth Presswood be aggressive towards him and be the one to kiss him in the elevator and whatnot. So apparently he says they went up to the hotel room to have sex play and uh, rough BDSM sex. And this happened. He spit on her mouth. She didn't like it. So they got on the bed. They're on the bed playing around. Her phone rings, and it's uh, Matt Delahunty. And Matt Delahunty has specifically said he does not want them having sex. Even though Matt Delahunty and her are swingers, uh, they have an understanding. Uh, he has to get permission, and he does not want her having sex with Dave. He per he specifically forbids it, but Beth is doing it anyway, and Dave knows that Matt doesn't want him having sex with his wife, but Dave is doing it anyway. So, not a very good friend, Dave. Just saying. Um, so, Matt calls her while they're fooling around, and uh, she lets it go to voicemail, and I guess she feels guilty or something, or she feels like she has to go. So, she gets up and she leaves, and uh, that's the end of that for that for then. Uh, but then later, she comes back to his hotel room, and a knocks on the door, and she comes back in, and they continue to play and have sex and whatnot. And he says that they engaged in very rough breast play. So rough that her breast, her, I guess she has piercings, her piercings start to bleed. It was so rough. And he says that she didn't have a problem with it. She thought it was, you know, amusing, but he was, like, a little bit, you know, freaked out about it. And uh, then they had sex, and she left and everything, and, you know, like, everything was copacetic. This is what he's saying about it. And then... She came out with this whole thing about she was sexually assaulted. Um, and I guess she told Matt Dillahunty that she was sexually assaulted. And I've spoken to people behind the scenes, and it seems like to me that he believed that she was sexually assaulted. Now, I'm going to play for you in a minute uh, audio that no one else has heard. I have exclusive uh I'm going to premiere this exclusively on the show because apparently I'm some kind of reporter now. It's weird. Um and I guess Dave is going to bring this out in his lawsuit where he, I don't know if this was, uh, where he secretly recorded a conversation he had with Matt Dillahunty two years after this happened, where basically he asked Matt if he has a problem with him. And Matt says, no, I'm fine with you. I'm willing to share the stage with you. And, and he says, well, clearly Matt doesn't believe that he assaulted his wife because would you say you're fine with the guy that you thought assaulted your, your wife? Would, would you share a stage with the guy who you thought assaulted your wife? You wouldn't. So this is proof that... He didn't think that. He, he knew, he thought Beth was lying, and uh, he continued to try to destroy David Silver's career, and so Dave is suing him for blackballing him and trying to destroy his career because, according to Dave, Dave believes that Matt Delahunty knew his wife was lying but tried to destroy him anyway, I guess out of vengeance because he was mad that they slept together or whatnot. I'm, I'm not, you know, I guess the trial will happen. We'll figure out exactly. Um, 
Now, whether that's true or not, I have no idea. I don't know what was going on in Matt's mind. It seems to me like Matt is sort of the victim in this. That's just kind of me. Um, and, you know, man, I don't like Matt Dillahunty. I don't have no fucking loyalty to goddamn Matt Dillahunty, cause especially all that, after that trans bullshit he pulled. But it seems like to me that this dude slept with his wife without his permission, and then it, it was one of the catalysts that led to their marriage breaking up, I think. I heard from other people that she had cheated on him multiple times. Of course, this is rumors and shit. I don't mean to spread rumors and shit, but uh, I was doing my investigative duty and I was calling people on the phone and calling insiders who were around back then and calling insiders to know both Matt and Dave. And I was talking to people and they were giving me all this inside information. And that's what they said to me. They said that Matt told them that they got a divorce because she was cheating on him repeatedly. Um, so, like I said, I don't know. I'm going to show you the evidence that suggests that she is not telling the truth. Um, and you can watch his video. He goes over all this in the video. But he also has a website called uh, Dave Silverman Firebrand for Good. And uh, under the Me Too section, he lays his case out completely about everything. And uh, I'm just going to scroll down to the uh, eyewitness testimony if I can find He also took a, a lie detector test, which I guess he passed. Um, um, trying to scroll down and find Camilla's testimony where she basically goes into uh, detail. Which, all right, here we go. Witnesses. People who actually saw something. Scrolling too much. Too much scrolling, website. People who actually saw something, e.g. the people below. More to come. Uh, all right. Read Dave Silverman at R. From my perspective and recollection, there are discrepancies in R's story in the BuzzFeed article of April 2018. I was the one with the marijuana to be smoked on the roof. While on the elevator, R seemed to be the initiator of the flirtatious behavior. I recall her standing on her toes as she is 12 to 15 shorter or more. Her arms around his neck trying to kiss Dave. Dave did not recoil or otherwise protest. While on the roof, I recall telling Dave there was blood or lipstick on his face, knowing it wasn't blood. At this time, R was flirting with Dave and showed no indication that she seemed distressed or uncomfortable. I actually felt uncomfortable because I knew both were married and knew each other and, and knew each other, each of their partners. Sorry. I suspected one had an open marriage, but I still felt less than at ease. I am not blindly defending Dave. I felt and feel that even if mutually consensual, it should not happen at our national convention. An open view of the other convention goers, and I agree. Like He has a problem being fired by American atheists, and I think even if what he says is true, that's still grounds for firing. It's very unprofessional to have sex with the wife of a board member publicly flirting with her and doing this kind of sexual displays during the convention at which you're a president of, to me, that's kind of a fireable offense. No, that's not professional. So I'm not really sure that his uh, lawsuit against American atheist is going to go all the way around. Maybe it will. You know, we'll see. It'll be interesting to watch the lawsuit. It was unprofessional in my opinion, but their business otherwise. Had I thought R was being harassed, was uncomfortable or otherwise, I would have asked her immediately, call a board meeting, Silverman and I have had differences, but the story is not accurate from my memory, and everyone deserves the truth. But in my view of the two parties that evening, I did not see Silverman force himself on her. If anything, it was the other way around. Uh, Ken uh, Lekinen, who was a board member at the time of American Atheists, and uh, here's another one. To make concern, despite what may have been reported, David did not embezzle from American Atheist. As far as I know, there were no discrepancies in the numbers. The financial statements and third-party auto accounted for the Treasury and had other funds attached to the organization. This was uh, Mario Ostanton. He was another board director. Okay. Um, and here's the one for Jamila Bay. That's what I was thinking. What did I call her? Camilla Harris? <laughs> That's the one that's running for president. <coughs> Sorry, Jamila. Brain fart on my part. But I've met Jamila Bay. She's, uh, she's a nice person. My name is Jamila Bay, and I'm a journalist based in Washington, D.C. I was on the board of American Atheist and was volunteering as the convention MC in Memphis, Tennessee during the annual convention. After, a, after the end of a long day, I came to a room in the Peabody Hotel in which num a number of conference attendees who were my friends were assembled. I found a chair and started socializing. I recall at one point recognizing Dave Silverman and remarking to him and anyone else in earshot, Hey, we have the same phone case. The case was a bright red heavy-duty protective waterproof holder. I reached out and took the phone, and on turning get over, saw no lock screen. I engaged no buttons or commands on the device. I viewed a photograph of a white-skinned woman's vagina taking at a close distance. I was embarrassed and felt... I don't know what all this fucking blue shit is where I can't fucking see what the hell's going on. What's wrong with your sight, Dave? 
Work that shit out. How do I get rid of that? Now it's gone all the way back to the top. Anyway, long story short, she's basically saying that she was an eyewitness. She saw the phone, which was, uh, he showed pictures of it, and it's, it seems to be proof that it was Beth Presswood's phone because there's pictures of her holding it. And uh, it backs up what he says, that he commanded her with his BDSM play to go into the bathroom and take a picture of her vagina and bring her phone back to him, and she did it. And Camilla backs that up. So it seems pretty obvious, in my opinion, that what Beth Presswood has said is not true. And if you've read this BuzzFeed article, it sounds like Dave is a sexual predator. And you can understand why anybody who reads that, who believes that, would disown him and it would ruin his life. So I'm going to play this uh, audio from Dave Silverman and Matt Delahunty. I guess Matt, I guess Dave Herbert Silverman took it secretly. And uh, I, I, like I said, I think he's going to use this in court probably to prove that he thinks that Matt knew Beth was lying. Because uh, if she wasn't lying, if he really thought Beth was assaulted by him, why would he agree to drop the whole thing and be friends with him? Or not friends, but friendly with him and appear with him on stage. So uh, here's that audio. Exclusive, folks. No one else is going to show you this audio. i got to move it over here to this other screen so you don't see the... Uh, you don't see my confidential informants because I don't want to give anybody away. People trusted me, so. Here we go. It's a mess. I need to find out about some lunch. Okay. So to, to, after that lengthy discussion. Um, How are we? We're pretty okay. On the things that I actually care about and okay. I'm going to talk about. That's Matt. We're fine. Okay. But. If you ever want to talk about things... Other things. Nope. Okay. Past is done. Okay. I'm, I got more shit to do and more important stuff to do. And there are people that I wouldn't share a stage with for various reasons. You aren't one of them. Okay. Keep working for the best of our American atheists and the movement. And I'm sure we'll fight on some shit from time to time. Sure. And that I'm far happier to fight with people uh, who I know are trying to do the right thing for the movement than for, you know, Dan. Yeah. Dan is, as far as I can tell, dedicated to making sure everybody on the planet knows that he's an activist and an actual activist. Uh, I don't see him doing any actual act. Oh, I went to this protest. All right, so that was the uh, audio that was given to me. Exclusive, folks. Hell, yeah. I'm like a legit reporter and stuff. I need like a Pulitzer or whatever they give to reporters. Is that what they get to reporters? I don't even fucking know. But anyway, uh, yeah, that's uh, what he suggests is proof that Matt Delahunty knew that Beth was lying. And he still, anyway, tried to destroy his career. So he's suing Matt over that. Um, so that would seem seemingly be the end of this whole thing, folks. But there's even a little bit more. And... This next part, folks, um, I really struggled with how I was going to present this next part and what I was actually going to say about it, because uh, I don't want to pile on the misinformation and everything, but when I basically came out and I, I said I was going to start talking about this story, I, I had lots of people messaging me, lots of insiders who were friends with both Dave and uh, Matt messaging me, and one in particular gave me some inside information, and I did verify that this person was a friend of David Silverman's during the time period all this happened. But I'm very hesitant to share what this person said because I wasn't able to verify it. They didn't have any screenshots of like any text conversations or anything. It's just what they claimed, Dave and both Beth told them. This person told me that they had a sexual encounter with Beth and uh, Beth told them what happened with Dave. And they said that Dave said it basically backed up what she said happened. Um, now, if I were to show you guys the screenshots, it would be like throwing a Molotov cocktail on this whole thing because there was a lot of things that were said that were very explosive and very damning towards Dave. But I have no idea if it's true, so I'm not going to share it because it's not, it's not, I'm not calling the person that told me a liar at all. Um, I just don't know. So... If I don't know, I feel like if it's not true, let's say this person is just mad at Dave, they hate Dave, and they're trying to use me to destroy Dave more. I feel like I would be in the moral wrong to be a part of that 
when he's already been lied about, clearly. Um, so I decided not to share that information with you. I just wanted to uh, be honest that a whistleblower did come forward, a whistleblower, quote unquote, did come forward and tell me things that paint Dave in a very negative light. But I have no evidence it's true, so I'm not going to share it. Um, but it does exist. I have to be honest about it. So anyway, um, if you're interested in helping Dave out, Dave is, I guess, uh, selling insurance now. If you believe Dave has been wronged, then you can go to his uh, website, Firebrand for Good, and you can donate to his. Uh, he doesn't have a Patreon, but he has something like Patreon. And uh, he's also selling insurance. So if you want to buy insurance and help him out, you can do that. Or if you think he's a fucking dickhead and he's guilty, you can tell him that too. Um, he's agreed to come on the show. I don't know if he still will come on the show after what I've said. Um, and I don't even know, like, we'll have to see how all this plays out, whether I'm going to have him on the show or not. It's still to be worked out. I'm not 100% sure about this yet. But anyway, I guess that's basically all I want to say about the Dave Silverman situation. You guys can uh, go try to uh, research this for yourself and you find out if you believe he's telling the truth, you believe he's been wrongly uh, accused and he's been destroyed wrongly, or you think he deserved what he got, you know? He did have sex with his friend's wife without permission and whatnot, which is not amazing, and uh, he did act unprofessionally, so I think he should have been fired for that, but the rest of it, I don't know. So what do you guys have to see? Let me read the chat. Uh, that photo of Dusty and Matt Delaney's wife, yeah, that's a classic one for sure. Um, why talk about it then, Dusty? Because it's somebody who was a whistleblower, and I don't feel like it's right for me just to pretend like this person didn't come forward and tell me. And also, this information is not going to come out during the trial because this person told me that uh, they admitted their credibility is not good. And uh, they said that they are not going to come out publicly with this. I'm the only person they're going to tell, and this information will not come out during the trial. So I kind of feel like I had to mention it or otherwise I would be, like, uh, dishonest. But... Take it with a grain of salt. Take it with a total grain of salt because I had no evidence that backs it up whatsoever. I'm just telling you what I was told by insiders. And I did, like I said, I did verify this person was a friend of Dave's at the time. I did do my due diligence and, and, and look into it a little bit. So. Um, oh, there's is more to the story? Probably. There's probably a lot of more to the story, you know? There, there, there's definitely two sides to the story. Now, whether Beth really does feel like she was violated in some way and then lied about the details because she was too embarrassed to admit that she was cheating on her husband and she's into BDSM and whatnot, and, and, uh, but she wanted Dave to pay, or whether she's just, you know, vindictive and a little bit out of her mind and just decided to destroy Dave for no reason, or, or maybe she was trying to cover up to her husband who was mad that she went out and did this and whatnot i don't know i have no idea so uh anyway uh this gossip is none of our business okay well it's all gonna come out during the trial so we'll see dusty about to be subpoenaed well if i get subpoenaed i guess it'll be fine i mean i didn't do anything I'll, I'll just tell the truth. That's all I can do, right? All right, let's read Super Chats. Light like Brother Show. Super Chats. Why do your shows make my pee pee happy? Because I am so damn sexy. You just can't help it. Thank you for that. Victoria Cunningham, $5. Did you see on MSNBC the number of transgenders that have been murdered this year? They read the names to the audience. It's really made me sad. I didn't see that, but I'm not surprised. It's definitely a giant issue that we need to uh, be tackling more. Uh, what can possibly go wrong? Nothing. Nothing can go wrong for sure. Uh, anyway, more Super Chats, please. I don't have really super chats. No one's really supporting the show tonight, but probably because I was too busy talking. So, uh, to me, Stephen Scott is a part of this. You okay? Uh, I'm trying to read your stuff, but it's not going to be too negative. All right. You got to stop making fun of the way she looks. Come on. It's, it's uncalled for. There's no reason for that, right? I don't understand why you guys would do that. Anyway, um,. Guess we'll move on. Let's look at some uh, shit on Facebook. Do a little video segment. I have a very short video segment tonight. I think I might have played this for. I'm not really sure, but uh, this was funny as fuck to me. So we're gonna play this shit. Get rid of all this shit popping up. Um, this is a, a video that came out a, a while back. But basically, this uh, woman goes up to Taco Bell, and uh, this worker at Taco Bell pretends she doesn't speak English, so she can't serve the woman at Taco Bell. And it's obvious she speaks English. And she understands what the woman's saying. She's just playing dumb, so let's watch a little bit. 
Avenue. Well, the line gonna be held up because I want to order. You telling me? You're here. You don't have a manager here. Who's your house? Where you sleep? 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 Nobody here speak English. Nobody in the Nobody back speak is. English. <laughs> she, she she understands you. You understand her perfectly. God damn it, you work at Taco Bell. If they say bean burrito, you know what a fucking bean burrito is. Give me a fucking break, dude. You know what a goddamn nacho supreme is. So you can't take my order. You won't understand what I'm saying? <laughs> but you speak something, no though. No yeah, but I want to order food. No, no, no hay nadie que hable inglés. <laughs> Yo. Mi vida, tengo carro atrás. No, I want to order. You not finna tell me to leave and I want to order. Anyway, a whole things like that where she keeps pretending she don't understand her, but she continues to understand her completely. You know what the fuck she's saying. Why are you lying? She must be pissed off this woman for something. I wish I knew what happened before that video started. It'd be good to know. And uh, next up. Oh shit, this is some crazy ass shit right here. So anyway, uh, this is a hit and run. Still driving after rear-ending someone. So, a mess, she, she rears in someone, this one rears in some, rear in someone, and then she keeps driving and speeding away, and uh, so they basically follow her, obviously, because they think she's like crazy and trying to get away. So, uh, you can see her cars when it, when it passes, it's all fucking smashed up and shit. Well, her front was anyway. Yeah, her front is all smashed up. And she just keeps on driving. She's driving down the road. And so uh, they're following her and whatnot. And then uh, as they're following her, she gets in another wreck, right? And uh, she's all fucked up. And they pull up. So what do you think? She on drugs? She just crazy? What is it? That's what I thought. I thought she must be on drugs or she must be drunk and shit. Um, that's why she's driving off and whatnot. And so they pull her over and they... Put the camera in there asking her, why'd you keep driving and whatnot? Are you drunk? Are you on drugs? And look at this shit. Let's see. Get on over there. Turn your head a little bit so we can see it. Shit. Come on. There we go. Look at that fucking knot on her head. So clearly, when she hit the first car, she had some kind of head injury. So I don't guess she's on drugs or anything. She just fucked up, I guess. Uh, looks like she has, like, a big-ass contusion on her, right? So, uh, that's some crazy-ass shit. Can you tell me your name? Nope. She has no idea where she is because she just got in a car wreck. So that's scary, isn't it? Get in a car wreck and keep driving like you don't even know what the fuck's going on. And, uh, last but not least, I'm going to show this little video clip. This is some crazy-ass shit. This is a black guy. He is beating the fuck out of these cops, man. Oh, man. What the fuck, dude? Be quiet. It's too loud. Less loud, please. But this is funny as fuck. So, he already done fucked this cop up. Look at this cop's all bloody. And this and it's funny as shit. He walking him down. And look at these two pussies over here, man. They ain't got their boys back at all. They're over there by the side like, nope. We don't want any of this guy. He done fucked you up. He done fucked us up. You all got batons and shit. There's three against one. Are you still scared of this guy? Weak. Fucking cops are so weak sometimes. Look at him. He walking that guy. These guys are standing way over here. <laughs> Go help your boy. What's the, what the fuck's up with you guys? Some cowardly ass shit, dudes. And uh, watch this. They take their batons out. They start beating on his legs and whatnot. And uh, he's just taking it, man. He's just taking it. And they finally, after their 401, they finally get him down and beat him with batons and shit. But it takes a whole fucking lot of them, and tasers and all, look at the whole crew. It takes fucking everybody to get this guy down. So, uh, that guy was a fucking beast. But, can't handle 50 cops, so eventually, obviously, they take his ass down. Nothing you can do about it. Eventually, they're gonna get you, even if you fuck a few of them up. So, that's that short-ass video section for today. And, uh, so I'll see what you guys have to say about all that on the chats and whatnot. All cops are bastards, eh. A lot of cops are bastards. I don't know if they're all bastards. I've met some cops I thought were pretty nice. I know that's not popular to say, but... Um, bacon defeated. Night, y'all. Night. Jules Black. Um, Davis Dusty's hero. So, of course he believes him. I didn't say I believe, I believe him. I mean, I...
I believe the evidence. I believe what I showed. I believe that Beth is lying. Now, whether wh what else happened in that hotel room, I don't have any idea. So, it's not that I believe him. I only believe what he's proven, which, you know, when eyewitnesses come forward and say, this happens, and, like, I know, I know Jamila Bay. She's an honest person. I believe her. Um, white guilt. Totally. I'm so fucking guilty for being white. <laughs> Have a five. Keep doing the show. You make my wife laugh in this timeline. She needs that. Hell, yeah, I heard that, right? It's a depressing as shit timeline. Got to do what we can. I sure appreciate that. What do you think about the Democratic debates? Uh, not much. Mostly dull. Biden. God damn it. It's like an old man telling stories from his childhood. Did I ever tell you about that time I fought a gang member called Corn Pop? Shut the fuck up, Biden. No one has to hear that shit. Anyway, more Super Chats, please. Lifeblood of the show. And I came across this article from Forbes, man. I can't believe Forbes wrote this article because Forbes is usually a pretty conservative magazine, but this was an excellent fucking article. Bill Burr's Paper Tiger exposes the myth of outrage culture, and God, this nails it so hard. I read a little bit of this. Bill Burr's new Netflix special, Paper Tiger, follows Dave Chappelle's Sticks and Stones. The two specials are both framed as a backlash against outrage culture with much of the material deliberately designed to offend. Sticks and Stones provoked the intended reaction, sparking debate across social media, with some viewing the special as a breath of fresh air in the politically correct world. Others expressing disappointment in Chappelle. The discrepancy between audience and critic scores on Rotten Tomatoes was highlighted as evidence that comedy critics are too easily offended, that audience are tired of being lectured. They show both positives. Watson, I've shown this before. Um, so basically, in, in short, this whole article is about how it's bullshit, how this whole manufactured cancel culture controversy is bullshit because you have multi-billionaires on Netflix who are not being censored in any way or being paying millions of dollars to say this shit, and they're basically just pandering to their audience because they know exactly, you know, they're going to make tons of money and they're going to cash in on those right-wing bucks. So, uh, let me read you the last of it here. Cancel culture, political correctness gone mad. It's a little more than marketing technique. An easy way to repackage old jokes. Laughing at the thought of other people being offended isn't laughter at the joke itself. It's an expression of personal conviction. To put it simply, you're free to mock the oppressed, if you like, but don't expect everyone to find it funny, especially if it isn't. And holy shit. Nailed it right there, man. Can't expect us to think there's a lame-ass hacky jokes that have been told a million times are funny. You know, we're not true snowflakes because we don't find it funny. It's just not fucking funny. It's been done to death, right? You know, we have standards. We're a more sophisticated audience. And yes, low-level people probably find that hacky shit hilarious. But, you know, if you've watched a lot of fucking stand-up in your life, you probably find it less humorous. That's my opinion. And uh, on the same note, it was amazing to hear Ricky Gervais say this. Hard to believe because he's been bitching about cancel culture, but I guess he's starting to uh, come out on the right side of this. And he's like, please stop saying you can't joke about anything anymore. You can. You can joke about whatever the fuck you like, and some people won't like it, and they will tell you they don't like it. And then it's up to you whether you give a fuck or not, and so on. It's a good system. And I was like, hmm, you know what? These jokes or these tweets sound sort of familiar, Ricky Gervais. They kind of sound like shit I say all the time. They absolutely have a right to say anything they want, and I have the right to criticize them for it, and they have a right to criticize me for criticizing them. The system works. You can. You can have any dumbass opinion you like, and you can get called out for that dumbass opinion, and people can distance themselves from you for having that dumbass opinion. The system works, so... I ain't saying Ricky Gervais is still in my tweets, but Ricky Gervais is still in my tweets. What's up, Ricky? Clearly, Ricky Gervais is a secret fan of mine. So thank you for tuning in, Ricky Gervais. Love you. Obviously, I'm just kidding. Um, but on the off chance you are a secret viewer of mine, Ricky Gervais, I would love to have you on the show. So holler at me. Though I won't hold my breath about that. Because I'm guessing you won't. And I thought this guy's comment was really funny about this whole thing. Left criticizes someone. PC, SJW, cancel culture. Right criticizes someone. The tree of liberty must be refreshed from time to time with the blood of patriots and tyrants. And that's exactly the way they are. They don't hold the right to the same standard as they hold the left to. And it's really frustrating. It's especially frustrating because I let lefties get away with them pushing this one-sided narrative. And this is another great example of this, you know. Uh, here's Barry Weiss. Conservative shithead. Uh bragging about these people being canceled. Wow, this never would have happened without Table Mag's relentless reporting. Yes, you got these people canceled, right? Women's March cutting ties with three original board members accused of anti-Semitism. So yeah, when they get people canceled, they celebrate it. Look, we got them canceled and deplatformed. Ha <laughs> it's amazing. No one calls them out for it. No one says, oh, you're cancel culture. 
completely different set of rules, but uh, Sean is calling them out. Barry Wise is applauding Tablet Mag for their effort to get the Women's March to cut ties with Tamika Mallory and Linda Saucer. Bookmark her tweet next time she gripes about cancel culture and people getting fired for their views. Please do. Please start hammering these people for their double standard because it's absolutely ridiculous. And uh, speaking of another cancel culture incident that happened, you guys might have heard about this. Shane Gillis, who was hired recently to be one of the new cast members of Saturday Night Live, has now lost his job. Fucking liberals and cancel culture, goddammit. So basically what happened was... He was on a podcast, I guess, I don't know, a couple years ago, last year. I don't know how long it was. I think it was last year, maybe. Um, and he thought it would be cool to call Asian people chinks and ching chongs and stuff like that, I guess. Brilliant comedy, dude. I'm just pushing the fucking envelope. That's what comedians got to do. We got to be acting and big, big, big. Nah, dude, that's just racist. And it, it didn't really come off as jokes. It just came off as you being a racist twat. Wasn't funny. It was just like you. Directly trying to be racist to Asian people. That's what it came off to me. But anyway, the same exact time that they hired this guy to be a new cast member on SNL, they hired an Asian guy. It's the first Asian guy they've hired on SNL in the 40 years they've been on the sh- they, they've been on air, right? So it just happened the first time they hired an Asian guy, which is a historical precedent. They also hired this guy who came out with a racist uh, podcast and whatnot against Asian people. So. Obviously, it didn't go over very well, so uh, they've decided to fire him. So I, I foresee him being on Joe Rogan, talking about cancel culture. He'll be on fucking uh, Steven Crowder show. He'll be on fucking Dave Rubin. This dude will be making the, search, the, the, the circuit, bitching about how the fuck he got cancer. But basically, all this is is it's just the market at work. This is exactly what conservatives say they want. They want the market to decide. You know, if somebody pisses you off, you boycott the show, right? I showed you the list of conservative boycotts. There's thousands and thousands and thousands of them. When they do it, it's fine. And people were like, no, Saturday Night Live, we are not happy with this guy's racist jokes in the past. Oh, yeah. And he also gave a, an apology. And his apology sucked. God damn it. Why don't people know how to give correct apologies? Basically, he was like, hey, I'm a comedian. Sometimes you have to be edgy and push the boundaries. But let me say this. I apologize to anyone who was actually offended. And God damn it. No, dude. No. That is not how you fucking apologize. That is, that's what you call a non-apology. No one's going to like that. I'm sorry if you were offended. You shouldn't be offended, you fucking snowflake. But I'm sorry if you are. That's basically what you're saying. Literally, all you had to say, you probably would still have a job right now. If you just came out and said, oh my God, I'm so embarrassed by this. That was completely 100% wrong of me. This is not in my character to behave like this. I've been thinking about what I said on this podcast for a long time, but I've been very, very embarrassed about it. And there's absolutely no justification for it. I want you to guys know that this does not reflect who I am. And my behavior has changed since then. And I am truly so sorry for this. And I hope that you will give me a chance to prove by my actions that this is not a reflection of who I am and that I have changed. Please allow me to prove to you guys that I deserve your redemption. Something along those lines. Instead of saying, I'm sorry if you were offended. That's just terrible. So he got fired because he don't know how to fucking apologize correctly. Um, so I don't know, maybe he should have been, maybe people should have been more understanding of him saying stupid shit a long time ago, or maybe, you know, the system works and you boycott the shows you don't like and they listen and they fire people that you don't want to watch. A lot of people don't want to watch this guy anymore because they think he's a shithead and they don't think he apologized correctly and I can understand that, right? So everybody has a right to their opinion. That's my opinion. Let's check the chats. What you guys got to say about that? I can't get over Shane Gillis in his face. Yeah. A non-apology is exactly what it is, a non-apology. 90s SNL was the best. I don't really watch it anymore, but uh, they're still going. Gotta give them that. Them and The Simpsons have been on for fucking ever. Cancel culture is good. I agree. I don't call it cancel culture anymore because, uh, well, I guess I, I keep calling it cancel culture, but I shouldn't. I see it more as social pressure. It's basically just peer pressure. It's the same thing that's existed since the beginning of mankind. In my, in my uh, observation and opinion, peer pressure is the second greatest non-violent way in history to change people's behavior. The first way is money, but you can't pay everybody off. We don't have tons of money to go around throwing our people. So peer pressure is a great way to change people's behavior, in my opinion. Um, cancel culture equals free market choice. Agreed. You know, that's something that conservatives say they like. But as soon as it happens to them, they no longer like it. Uh, JLP made fun of Yang for being Asian. Yeah, I played that on my last show. Top three favorite porn stars. Cat. Like old school cat. I don't know if you know that he is. Um... 
I don't know. It's the only one I can think of off the top of my head, to be honest with you. I don't, like, know any porn stars' names anymore. I'm not into it heavily like I used to be. Bill Maher used to punch up. Now he is gone, going after the overweight. Yeah, I saw that. Bill Maher saying that people should be fat shamed again. Bill Maher is sort of a piece of shit. I don't know why he's still a representative to the lefty community. Cancel Bill Maher. That's my opinion. Let's see, got any more super chats? Super chats? Nope, no more super chats. All right. Slow on the super chats tonight. Please support the show if you're able. It's the only way I'm going to continue to do this show. I think it's an important show. I think I'm talking about topics nobody else is talking about, so please help me out if you can. Let me check. I never check over here. Onto the, I always forget to check on the other chat. We have another chat window for the people that are on um, Twitch and Facebook. I watched Bill Burr and Dave Chappelle. Both were funny shows. They're okay. They had funny moments and bad cringy moments. I started watching here on Twitch. Even if I can't watch live, I start the stream going just to help out. I appreciate that. Use all the help on Twitch I can get. I'm trying to make partner. I'm not going to make it any time. Only three viewers on Twitch? Yeah, I'm not surprised. Nobody watches this shit on Twitch. It's dead. But we're building it up. That's all we can fucking do. Um, who is Dan in this conversation? I don't know, to be honest. Is that another nickname for Dave? And is Dave dead? I have no clue, to be honest with you. Um, all right. On with the show. Guess we're going to shit on Ben Shapiro a little bit. You guys have been hearing the stupid shit Ben Shapiro's been saying, so I guess I'll just play it and you guys can see it for yourself, and then we'll make fun of him and we'll read about all the people dunking on him. Because so many people are dunking on Ben Shapiro exactly as they should, and it ain't hard to dunk on Ben Shapiro because he ain't very tall. Ha ha, tall jokes! Said by Shorty. And he says this is America, you know, not Canada. He is correct. Now, people on the left were laughing at him, but the fact is that when he says that, he's not wrong. The fact is medical innovation happens here. You want a surgery, you're going to be able to get a surgery in the United States of America. The fact it's is healthcare outcomes it. in the United States are still pretty good when you remove all of the confounding factors. In fact, if you take away car accident deaths and homicide and suicide from the national statistics, what you end up with is the United States is one of the top countries on earth in terms of life expectancy. <laughs> yeah. If you take away all the common causes of people's death, the life expectancy goes up. Holy shit. So brilliant. And uh, Cody's like, Ben Shapiro is very smart. If you take away the thing he says, yep, yeah, that's true. If you take away all the dumb things he says, which is everything, he's so fucking genius, isn't he? Dumbass Ben Shapiro. And, but he kept going, kept fucking saying stupid shit. Uh, let's listen to him talk about how he can't believe the Kavanaugh's accusers because they didn't describe his dick. We've had a bevy of public figures in recent years who have had their genitalia described on national television by people who allege sexual assault. Right. Stormy Daniels famously described President Trump's genitalia. Bill Clinton's genitalia. Details of such were, were talked about. Nobody has yet described Kavanaugh's genitalia. Now, that's not dispositive. Maybe they were generic. Who knows? But the bottom line is we've had no corroborating details on any of these stories. All of them apparently happened in public places with other witnesses available, and not one witness has been there who corroborates any of these stories. That's right, folks. Like, what I'm wondering is, if this really happened, how come nobody has described what Kavanaugh's dick smelled like, right, right? I mean, hypothetically, hypothetically, let's just say that uh, Kavanaugh pulled out his penis and he stuck it in these women's faces like they claim, right? Um, how come nobody described the smell, right? Was it musty? Was it clean? Did he have sweat on his balls? How come they're not saying? I, I, I cannot believe you at all unless you come out and, and tell me what his dick smelled like. Anyway, dumbest person on earth, and he fucking got hammered relentlessly and dunked on by everybody. Uh, here's one from James Franco. Keep the sound off and just watch his little head shake around as if he's a puppet whose puppeteer is trying to swat a bee away from the string still attached to his hands, which is exactly what it looks like. Look at, he's all, eh, I'm Mitch Barrow. Hey, look at me. I talk really fast and I talk really high pitched. Oh my God. Yeah. Yeah, she know he's ruining everything. Yeah. I don't believe fucking sexual assault victims. Nope. So, obviously got dunked on over and over again. Well, let's talk about uh, the New York Times real quick. The New York Times actually tweeted this. Having a penis thrust in your face at a drunken dorm party may seem like harmless fun. What? Wait, wait, wait. Let me stop you right there. What? No, it's not. Having fucking penises th thrust in your face by strangers is not fucking harmless fun, goddamn New York Times. What in the fuck? But when Brett Kavanaugh did it to her, Debra Ramirez, it confirmed that she did, didn't belong at Yale in the first place. Oh my God. Cringe, what in the hell are you thinking, New York Times? This is bad, and you should feel bad. And Cody Johnson's all over. Cody Johnson's like, don't stop at deleting the tweet. Delete your opinion section. You should immediately, New York Times. I hate to agree with Donald Trump on anything, but the failing New York Times 
need to shut the fuck up. Uh, but it's cool because uh, Kavanaugh is making right wingers try to normalize some really depraved behavior in order to defend him. And this is funny. Uh, Brett Kavanaugh instigated bar fights after a UB40 concert. Police reports were revealed, and then everybody's like, I have been in dozens of bar fights. Ask the guys I grew up with. Nearly lost an eye in one, and that's just one of the injuries. I have the scarred stitch marks to prove the rest. Never been blackout drunk, but I have to defend myself, which I'm still perfectly capable of doing. I don't know one guy, including myself, who wasn't in a bar fight. Not one single dude. Well, let me introduce myself. Hi, I'm Dusty Smith, and I'm an adult, and I have never fucking been in a bar fight. And you know why? Because I'm a grown-ass man. I don't fucking give a shit what some drunk dude fucking says to me. Get the fuck away from me, drunk dude. I'll stab you, but I ain't gonna fucking fight you. Hell no, man. People that get in bar fights are insecure as fuck. What'd you say to me? I gotta prove something to you because I'm a man. I ain't got nothing to fucking prove to you. I'm just trying to have a beer. Fuck off, dude. There's only two things that are going to happen here, all right? Either you're going to fuck off or you're going to punch me and I'm going to stab you. That's the pick one. Like, I don't want to stab you. I just want to have my beer, so you should leave. And uh, But luckily, I've never had to stab anybody because usually when you tell people you're going to stab them, they don't punch you. That's my observation and experience. So, and then this one says, uh, I lived with all guys my senior year of college, and this happened to me literally every day. One of my roommates walked around naked every day. And so this other person had a funny response to this. She says, I lived with all guys my senior year of college, and this happened to me every, literally every day. One of my roommates walked around naked every day. And so this person says, uh, so you find the allegations to be credible? And she's like, nope. <laughs> so... She's like, yeah, this is something that happens all the time. This is completely normal. Uh, so you think it probably happened? Nope. I still don't believe it. Even though it happened to me repeatedly, I still don't believe it's possible that it happened. Oh, my God. This is the level these people are, right? They're in such fucking denial. They don't really give a shit about the truth. They contradict themselves repeatedly. And uh, I don't know if you guys have heard, but uh, we're on the break of war with Iran, which is suboptimal, in my opinion. Not amazing. And here's Tulsi Gabbard. I'll read what Donald Trump has to say first. And what Donald Trump is saying here is fucking terrifying, folks. Saudi Arabia oil supply was attacked. There is reason to believe that we know the culprit. Are locked and loaded depending on verification, but are waiting to hear from the kingdom as to who they believe was the cause of this attack and under what terms we would proceed. That, like, I don't know if you understand how scary this is, but basically Donald Trump right now is saying that Saudi Arabia is in charge of our military right now. That we are the, basically an arm of Saudi Arabia now. That when they tell us who to strike, we will strike. We are the military arm of Saudi Arabia right now. And uh, Tulsi calls him out. Trump awaits instructions from his Saudi masters. Having our country act as Saudi Arabia's bitch is not America first. And holy shit, ain't that right? And um, Bernie Sanders also called him out for this. Mr. Trump, the Constitution of the United States is perfectly clear. Only Congress, not the president, can declare war. And Congress will not give you the authority to start another disastrous war in the Middle East just because the broody Saudi dictatorship told you to. And can you imagine this, folks? There's a Democrat doing this. First of all, Saudi Arabia kills an American journalist. They chop his body up into little pieces, and our president covers it up. Then he sells them billions of dollars of weapons that they're going to use in their war against civilians. And now... He is agreeing that if they tell him to attack their enemies, the United States military will attack the enemies of Saudi Arabia. These are the people who are behind 9-11. 14 of the 19 hijackers were from Saudi Arabia. There are ties to funding that came directly from Saudi Arabia. So now we have a president of the United States covering up for the people who were not completely, but very much responsible for 9-11. He's covering up their murdering American journalists, and he's allowing them to use our military to attack their enemies. This country of evil Muslim terrorists, run by evil Muslim terrorists. I'm not saying the people of the country are evil Muslim terrorists, right? Uh, lots of fine people in Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia is mostly really good people. I'm talking about the government, the prince and whatever the fuck all these uh, royalty are. They're fucking terrorists, right? They're evil fucking human beings, evil Muslim dickheads, and our president is in their back pocket and it basically is their uh, bodyguard. 
So terrifying, terrifying shit, folks. We need to get Bernie Sanders or somebody like Bernie Sanders in office immediately to cut this shit out because this has gone way too far. And uh, that brings me uh, to the next video I want to play. I want nothing to do with this film. All right, hush up for just a second. Um, this is Vadim, who uh, also known as Creationist Cat. He put out a new video, and this video is so criminally underwatched, folks. Holy shit. It's got almost 30,000 views, but the time he puts into this stuff, the work he puts into this, is fucking amazing. And you guys need to go support Vadim and, and subscribe to him and help spread this video because it needs to be seen by more people. And basically, he's taken all these people to task who are bitching about comic book movies. And uh, Vadim is a comic book nerd. He knows what the fuck he's talking about. And it's clear that none of these motherfuckers who make all these videos, who make all this money, who get all these views for talking about comic book movies... They have never read any of these comics. They have no idea what the fuck they're talking about in any way whatsoever. And he busts them out for it so bad, and it's beautiful. So I suggest that after you watch this video, uh, you go check out his video on this. And I just want to show you a few things from it. Um, one is where no bullshit is being incredibly fucking racist. It's hard to believe that this guy hasn't been removed from YouTube for being this racist. Listen to this bullshit. Shit so eloquently stated in a recent video. In their messed up heads, they think movies, TV, and the world has been dominated by straight white males, which in part is true, but they say it's because of racist biases and white supremacy, when really, we've been running everything because we're better, stronger, smarter, and more talented. An exemplary job. God damn, this is what he looks like. This is what no bullshit looks like. And holy shit, how the fuck do you get any more racist like that? White men, straight white men, don't dominate entertainment because of white supremacy. White supremacy doesn't exist. It's because we're better than everybody else. That's why we dominate. We're smarter. We're more creative. We're better. But white supremacy doesn't exist, folks. Racism doesn't exist. It's bullshit. White people are just better than other races. Good fucking Lord, dude. Seriously. The anti hcw community is fucking awesome, isn't it? I want to play one more. Um, this is from the uh, the quartering, who is incredibly popular for some reason. Like he'll make a video that'll be seen two hundred thousand times, that he just says off the top of his head. When this movie's only been seen thirty thousand times, which is absolutely ridiculous. And here, Vadim busts him out so bad, showing that he basically lies to his audience by only reading them part of what somebody says in order to outrage them and blow out the context. But when you actually read the whole thing, you, this motherfucker is lying his ass off. Let's watch. 2019 is absolutely ridiculous. So as you can see, a lot about King of uh, point to make in regards to statements from the film's screenwriter. She said there's been a lot about talk about whether Bond is even relevant now because of who he is and the way he treats women. <laughs> Get out of here. I want nothing to do with this film. Uh, the idea that James Bond isn't relevant in 2019 is absolutely ridiculous. So as you can see, the quarter egg does have a rock solid point here. The screenwriter does kind of sound like she thinks the franchise sucks by saying 007's not relevant. Unless, of course, you scroll down and see the part that he neglected to read. I think that's bullshit. I think he's absolutely relevant now. The franchise has just got to grow. It has just got to evolve. God damn, what a lying fuck, right? God damn it. This is how the game is played, though, people. They don't give a shit what the truth is. And, you know, the audience doesn't even give a shit what the truth is. The audience just wants to be outraged about something, and this guy feeds their outrage. So even if you tell them that he's lying to them, they're like, who cares? Still, SJWs, am I right? Fuck them all. It's like the low level of this audience. So anyway, good job, Vadim. Keep busting these motherfuckers out, and everybody go support Vadim. Uh, that also reminds me, uh, you guys should be liking the video right now. You should, guys should be... Thumbs up in this video. Stop right now. Thumbs up the video right now, folks. Please thumbs up the video. Something I should be telling you guys to do more often that I don't remind you guys to do. But uh, it really helps if you guys thumbs up my video. So please just take half a second right now. And if you're not subscribed to me, also subscribe to me. That really fucking helps. So we're going to continue by shitting on... Well, let me read the chats real quick. Do I have any chats? What you guys saying? Anything interesting going on? The quartering is afraid of Veg. That's true. I think he's married, though, probably. But still, Incel King. I know, right? They're all fucking incels. So embarrassing. Uh, LOL, he got owned. He did get owned, but the problem is, like I said, his videos will get seen hundreds of thousands of times, and Vadim's only got seen 30,000 times. So even though he is wrong, he lied, and there's proof he lied, not very people are going to actually see it because it doesn't get spread as much because the anti hcws and the conservatives still fucking run and own YouTube, and it's very depressing. Um, that's on the Creationist Cat channel, not mine, folks. Uh, yes, it's on the Creationist Cat channel. I didn't say that, but I didn't make that clear. Please go support Vadim. What's up, Vadim? 
Man, Vadim, you did a great job on that video. I was very entertained. All the voices you did, the little cat crew you put together. Very, very smart stuff. I apologize for saying I was the talent. You clearly are very talented. I feel bad about that. Um, even though I didn't mean it that way, I was just talking about a position called the talent. But I take it back. You're a very talented dude. Um, Dun Dusty, appreciate that. I like Creationist Cat Channel. You should. Everybody should support Vadim. He's a really good guy, really nice guy. And uh, he's a friend of mine. Um, you are not my mom, huh? Nope, I could be your dad, though. Ask your mom. You don't even fucking know, dude. Let's see, uh... <laughs> Five dollars from Zay? I couldn't think of a question. Well, that's okay, Zay. I will take your money and I will buy kitty litter with it. So, I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Dunky Gone Ben Shapiro should be an Olympic sport. Yes, I would go. I'd finally medal in the Olympics. My little weak, short, unathletic ass would finally find something I can medal in. Uh, hey, Dusty, how do I send a super chat? You just did. You figured it out. Good going, James Mountain. Appreciate it. Uh, how can normal people make change? Um, you guys have so much more power than you really think you do, to be honest with you. Like, every upvote you give something is power. Everything you share on your social media is power, you know. Uh, everybody you subscribe to is power. It, everything you retweet is power. You're voting constantly with the information you share. So, if you don't use your power, somebody else is. And that's the problem. All these conservatives are continuing to use their power, and a lot of you aren't sharing the videos, not even my videos, just any of these videos. You're not doing your part to go out there and I express your power, and you should. So, that's my suggestion. Share the videos. Alright, more Super Chats, please. Light blood of the show. Um, hey, bro, hope you're good. I am good, Daily Dump News. How are you doing? I submit that the French Connection was neither French nor connected. Discuss. Never seen it, but I heard about it. Uh, Rationality Rules did another video on ELT. Yeah, I think the whole ELT thing has gotten blown out of proportion. I think, uh, I'm against ELT coming out and calling rationality rules violent. Now, I, I know where he's coming from. I think he's, he's thinking that if you ban trans women from sports, that's some kind of how a violent act because you would have to use violence to, I, to do it. I guess that's his stance. I'm not really sure. But I'm against that. I do think rationality rules was put out a transphobic video, and I do think he's a dickhead in a lot of ways. But violent, nope. I don't see that at all, and I, and I don't uh, support that. Um, Dusty, you watch Parenti. I, I know what it is, but I haven't really seen too much of it. Um, have you seen the old TV show, series Monk? Hell yeah. It's a jungle out there. Disorder and confusion everywhere. No one seems to care. But I do. Hey, who's in charge? Shit, little Randy Newman. Hell yeah. Who got a photographic memory? Dusty got a photographic memory. Anyway, let's keep going. Um, we're going to shit on. Paul Joseph Watson. Paul Joseph Watson got dunked all the fuck over every goddamn where. Apparently he's freaked out because these women are twerking. And uh, why in the hell would you have a problem with this? Holy goddamn shit. Look at this. More of this, please. But no. Paul's like, modernity. Oh my God. And the whole society is collapsing because women are shaking their fucking booties. And of course, yeah, he got dunked. Uh, Ethan Clyde from H3A3 Productions was like, my dirty rules. And hell yeah, it does, Ethan. Dunk on that motherfucker, Ethan. You know, I've uh, shit on Ethan a little bit, but uh, he don't seem like he's too bad to me. Seems like he's all right for the most part. And uh, Rational Disconnect also dunking on him. He's like, uh, <laughs> reactionaries, Muslims are oppressed savages who control their women and force them to cover themselves. A woman shakes her ass. Reactionaries are like, oh, my God, modernity. And I and Miles wrong is, well, it's not I and Miles wrong. Here's I and Miles wrong. Also, the women in this class, why can't I find a good boyfriend who treats me with respect? I guarantee you these women in this class have no trouble finding fucking men, dude. And uh, Ashton Birdie's like, repeal the 19th. Oh, God. Chuds, chuds, got a chud. This is powerful and empowering. You go, girl. I mean, it is empowering. They're making the choice to do this themselves. They're not being forced to do it by any man. They want to go have a twerking class, and they want to get in shape by shaking their booties, and they absolutely have the right to do any fucking thing they want to do, right? That's female empowerment, like it or not. And uh, so, anyway, more people shitting on Paul. Either folks like Paul have the proverbial go fish memory or they're all grifters who don't really believe any of the shit they say. That's exactly what it is, right? Here's Paul in one of his videos. What Hitler called degenerate feminist label offensive. And now here's Paul. Hopefully your wife wasn't there, you filthy degenerate. So I guess Paul is a Hitler-loving feminist by his own logic. I don't know, but he pretty though. Look at those DSL. Don't think about it, folks. Don't think about it. Just think about how amazing that face is. That's all I know, right? And uh, more dunking. Is that all the dunking? Oh, no. More dunking. 
<laughs> yeah, this is the guy who says that conservatism is the new punk rock. And Christy Asity calls him out. Well, my stars. Here's the new punk rocker himself clutching his pearls for dear life. Incel puritism is creepy as fuck. And that is goddamn true, man. He is so creepy as fuck. And here he is. He was saying back in 2000, what is this, 2015? Welcome to 2015. Where self-righteous, joyless, intolerant, politically correct Puritan thought police have ruined everything. Talking about no self-awareness whatsoever. Thou name is Paul Joseph Watson. And Mike Stuckelberry giving him shit. Paul, if you think this utterly is depraved, I've got classic Greek vases that will make you faint. Yeah, dude. He thinks that modernity is all disgusting and shit. You never heard of Caligula? You never heard of the shit that was going on back in Rome? That dude used to pay little boys to swim around in a swimming pool and like swim up to him and bite his ass all naked and shit. We way better than they were, motherfucker. We improved a lot. God damn it. Open a book, Paul Joseph Watson. Crack that shit open. And Claudia is also dunking on him. This is Paul Joseph Watson at a strip club. It's like, oh my God, no. Don't shake your booties at me. Oh God, Jesus is going to be so mad. Jesus is going to be so mad. Fucking dork. God damn it, how You can be such a dork. And um, then he starts complaining about fucking Halloween. This no fun having motherfucker. I love Americans, but let me remind you again that Halloween is for children. And your obsession with it over a month beforehand is so bizarre and a little disturbing. Fuck off, Paul. Fucking fun police. Peppy Paul is still here sucking the fun out of everything like some grotesque fun vampire. Ain't that right? Somebody got some garlic and crosses to end him with it and even the amazing atheist is dunking on you when amazing atheists start dunking on paul joseph watson you know shit's got out of hand right he's like fucking whatever paul if the squares can turn the last third of the year into an extended christmas us degenerates can do the same thing with halloween first holiday to, first holiday to take over the entire year wins and i agree with tj on this one not gonna hate on tj you keep shitting on paul joseph watson tj finally stop being friendly with this dude and uh cody johnson is like I guess he's pointing out the same thing I pointed out before, the hypocrisy of Paul. Hi, Paul. Welcome to 2015, where self-righteous, joyless, and tolerant, political, correct, Puritan thought police have ruined everything. Yeah, you get him, Cody Johnston. I just want to say this. Um, I definitely do not have a sexual crush on Cody Johnston. I am definitely, absolutely not bi-curious for Cody Johnston. Just want to put it out there. Disgusting to me. And... Uh, a defining trait of the right is their total lack of interest in finding out what their opponents actually believe. 100% of their energy is focused on building a straw man version of the left and then relentlessly reinforcing it. And ain't that true? Like, he don't give a fuck. He didn't even watch it. I haven't watched the debate, but let me guess. Trump racist, orange man bad, virtue signal, virtue signal, virtue signal, virtue signal. Was I close? Uh, no, dude. This is just a straw man you built because you're too fucking lazy to actually watch the shit and you just want to put red meat out for your idiot fan base and look, 22,000 likes, 23,000 likes because they don't give a fuck. You don't have to be educated in any way. Doesn't matter to these people. They just want you to shit on the left. Did I put on the left? Are you triggered? Nope. Sure ain't. And uh, here's our old Cody Johnson tweet that I want to share because I think this might be the greatest tweet of all time. The left got a little too PC, so I changed all my opinions about the economy, social issues, systemic racism, healthcare, and history. Yep, that's about right, folks. All the people that said, oh, my God, the SJWs pushed me to the right. I had to support Trump now because of feminists. Well, and you're a fucking spineless dick, aren't you? If you're willing to change all your fucking positions because somebody on the left said something you didn't like, that says more about you than it does them, doesn't it? That shows you're already pretty much leaning that way to begin with. Sack up, motherfuckers. Let's see, we're about an hour and 30 into the show, right? Yeah, I've got another 30 minutes to go. Cool. Make a good time. I still got all this shit to cover on the show. And um, so, I don't know if you guys are aware of this or not, but uh, ContraPoints is back on Twitter. Hooray! ContraPoints is back. Well, sort of. A little bit. Let's read what she had to say. Hi, y'all. I deactivated my Twitter last week, intending to take a longer break than this. But since commenters, journalists, etc., uh, hopefully she's not talking about me, have begun using my absence and silence as an opportunity to speak for me, I feel like I have something, to, I have to say something. My discomfort with gender-neutral language and explaining my pronouns does not outweigh the needs of other trans, non-binary, and gender non-conforming people. I regret expressing my feelings in a glib way that did not convey the importance of those needs. It saddens me that this mistake has been exploited by other public figures to attack non-binary people. Thank you to those of you who have criticized me in a measured and constructive way. I will try to do better. This is awesome. Like, it's almost like she's listening to me. I hope... 
I hope she is. Maybe she's not. Maybe she's like really smart. I mean, she's obviously really smart, but I'm saying maybe she came out this all on her own without me, which she probably did. But I would like to think that I may have encouraged this. I don't know. Probably just conceded. I have decided that Twitter has not a good is not a good platform for me, and I have turned this account over to my assistant Gwen, who will manage it from now on. See you on YouTube and Instagram, Natalie. And so basically, she's claiming she's turned her account over to this other person, Gwen. Now, whether that's really true or not. It's probably still contra points. It's kind of like how uh, Destiny came back with a new account that he pretended it was his friend, but it was really him. It's probably still her just pretending like it's her friend, so she has some kind of uh, kind of an out for, for, for what's posted on there. Um, plausible deniability, I guess that's the word I'm looking for. But anyway, um, happy she did this because uh, obviously the reason she came out with this is because people like Blair White were using this against her. Speaking for her, new video, The Truth About Contra Points and Non-Binary, a trans woman being canceled by the non-binary cult is bullshit. Let's talk about the difference between legitimate transsexuals and non-binary people. RT, please. Yep. Fucking trash. Blair White's trash. Always, always, always trash. Trying to jump on this to uh, push her agenda against trans people because she's a self-hating trans person. And it's uh, horrible to fucking see. And um, here's the thing. A lot of people are like, Oh my God, the left canceled Natalie and they don't even give her the opportunity to apologize or to redeem herself. There's no reason for her to apologize because even if you apologize, they're not going to accept it. And there were so many people I saw posted stuff like this. This is literally all we wanted. Thank you, Natalie. She really seems like she's making an effort to be more careful about her language and like she's taking real responsibility for a platform. That's perfect, right? And that's what so many of the people that were criticizing her have come out and said. They completely accepted her apology. You know why? Because she knows how to apologize, man. She did it exactly right. What she said is perfect. She is so smart. She said the exact right thing. And then, boom, it worked like a charm, right? Now, I'm sure there's some people that are not going to forgive her. But a tons of fucking people did. And that's my experience, too, folks. Regardless of what they tell you about the left and SJWs and how they're never going to forgive you, they're going to cancel you forever. Hell, I was fucking canceled, and I came out with some really good, heartfelt apologies, and I was accepted by them again, right? I was accepted by the left, and uh, so was Natalie. So don't be afraid to apologize. Don't be afraid to make mistakes. Um, just own that shit, right? That's my advice. And, uh, yeah, if you're a trans person, maybe ignore this. A little bit of trigger warning, but this is some incredibly vile dipshit. I'm going to read you what they had to say. Um, I hear the dogs barking in there. I wonder what's up in there. Hopefully it'll be okay. If there's such thing as a lady brain in the wrong body, there should be a medical test. If that test could be done in the womb, we could have a simple test for trannyism and abort the fuckers. Oh, that's beautiful. How the fuck is this person still on goddamn Twitter? And uh, she says, trans folks, ignore, or this person, I don't know if they're gender, let me see if their pronouns are, let me show I don't fuck that up. Uh, she, her, okay, good. She says, trans folks, ignore this tweet. Go have a nice cup of tea. Cis folks, pull up a chair. Because this is an example of the hateful rhetoric trans people face on a constant basis. And you need to know what we're subjected to. Support trans people. And that's absolutely right, man. We have to support trans people. They're the most vulnerable class in society. Uh, like somebody said earlier, they put out a list of all the trans people that have been murdered this year. And it's a huge list. It's a giant problem. And uh, we need to be proactive to tackle this. And... Uh, support trans rights as much as possible you know i hate this shit fucking makes me mad as fuck and uh on the same level unsurprisingly when sam smith came out with their new pronouns i'm gonna try so hard not to fuck this up um they unsurprisingly took a huge amount of shit and hatred from people simply for expressing how they want to be treated um and i read let's see i'm just gonna scroll through here and see if i can just find someone off the top that Shows how evil this is. Um, I'm just curious. So do all people that constitute they and them, do you hear their voices in your head? 2.2K likes. What if I consider myself to be a helicopter? 4K likes for the only joke they fucking know. You guys only have one joke. It's so sad. Um, don't care, mate. You're a he. Well, you can't even spell the word you're correctly. You know, it's Y-O-U apostrophe R-E. It's U-R-A-E, you fucking dumbass transphobic dipshit. Why are we mainstreaming delusion? Oh, God. You're not mainstreaming delusion. You're just respecting how somebody wants to be treated. You fucking pieces of shit. He will take... He will always be a he. His DNA says he's a he. Just, so anyway... 
unsurprising this is still the world we live in this world is still not supportive of trans people and non-binary people in any way we still have a long 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 fucking way to go but we're gonna fight we're not ever gonna give up the fucking fight we're gonna change society i have absolute not faith but uh what is the word i'm looking for hope i don't know we're gonna work it out let me read the chats now let's see what you guys have to say in the charts Trans people killed more now because of Trump. Yeah, Trump has definitely accelerated the transphobia in this country. No doubt about it. But also the anti HDW community. You know, people like uh, Blair White, who constantly spread trans hate, and other people who uh, enable her, like Shoe on Head, who's constantly shouting out Blair White and helping her to be more popular, and no one's calling her out for it and shit. It's terrible. And, you know, you have, even have people like, uh, you know, I've called the Amazing Atheist out and shit for this. But pretty much all the heroes in the anti HDW community, they have helped add to this narrative of trans hate and I really wish they'd start speaking out against it but I don't suspect they will anytime soon um, why be offended by anything because there's lots of things offended in this world aren't you offended that ISIS threw gays off the top of buildings aren't you offended by transphobes that attack trans women aren't you offended by racism and bigotry if you're not you're a piece of fucking shit dude the fuck uh, let's see I think most atheists just want to be edgy. I don't know. I, a lot of them. I don't know about most atheists. A lot of them, like, on YouTube and stuff, edgy is where you make your money. Edgy is very popular to the children and to the kids, and so they do it to pander to their audience, in my opinion. Uh, RR literally apologized. Uh, did he, is his apology any better? Because last time I saw his apology, he was saying, hey, everybody go out there and uh, take a look at Noel Plum. Look at what Noel Plum has to say about this, because I believe Noel Plum has the best take, and Noel Plum's position is literally to explain why trans women should be barred from competing with what he calls biological women. So, did he apologize for that yet? Has he distanced himself from Noel Plum yet? If not, fuck that dude, right? And fuck you for supporting that dude also, I might add. Uh, thoughts on Sam Harris? Disappointing. Really fucking disappointing with Sam Harris. I had a clip I was going to play of him. Um, what was he saying that I disagreed with? I think he was saying that Trump is not racist and too many people are, are using racism. or I don't know. It was, it was really fucking stupid embarrassing as someone who was hurt by what contra had to say it comes off as cowardly for her to not even give herself a real opportunity to show she changed okay i guess you're not willing to accept her apology yeah, Her apology was really good but uh you have a lived experience that i do not have that is valid and uh, i respect your opinion and you absolutely have the right to it so thank you for that hello horn two dollar sexual crushes on cody should be encouraged i don't have any sex i do not i'm not by curious in any way about cody johnson bullshit all right, more Super Chats, please. Been really light tonight, but it's okay. It's fine. I'm not going to bitch about it too much. Just just a little bitch. Just a little bit. Um, all right, what time is it? Another 20 minutes. Good. Um, so, uh, is this the duck one? Oh, yeah. I'm not sure, folks, but I think this duck might be a super villain. <laughs> Yeah, that dude, that duck's about to take over the world. Don't fuck with this duck, dude. This duck will kill you. Seriously, that duck means business. That's some evil fucking laugh in there, isn't it? And um, next up, got one from Asia. Oh, God, this is going to piss you off. Talking about the white power structure that's in this country, and I, I, I talked about this in the last video. And uh, if you're not helping to dismantle the white power structure in this country, you're part of the problem. You're part of it. As white people, we absolutely have a responsibility to, to acknowledge the history of white supremacy in this country and how it still is very much intact in this country and how it's still very much part of the power structure in this country. And it is up to us, us, those of us who have power, to change it, right? You don't expect the people that have less power to change it. You expect the powerful to change shit. And that's why it's up to us whiteies to stand up and fucking fight back against this shit. And here's some bully-ass cops who are walking up to these black kids who are at a uh, bus stop and, and basically just trying to intimidate and bully them for no fucking reason. They take this one guy who has his shirt off, who's done nothing wrong just because he has his shirt off, and they put him in the back of this car, and they try to intimidate him. Uh, Instagram is helping this get out, but it needs more attraction. This happened in Philadelphia, PA, on Thursday. A group of school kids and I were waiting for the bus at the bus stop when a cop car came to us, slowed down and stared at us, and then kept going down the street. 
He then returns three minutes later with another cop car, and now there are four officers. It was 87 degrees outside, and the young gentleman, who was about 14, did not have a shirt on at the time. The officer grabs him aggressively and pushes him into the police car while trying to get the rest of us to go down the street to the next bus stop. We refuse to move. The officer then waits until the next bus comes and try to get everyone onto that bus while he still has the young man in the car. Once again, we refuse to walk away until the young boy was once again with us. The officer finally let the boy out and then proceeds to mess with him. He yells, don't forget to tell your friends you were shaking in the police car. And when the video clipped off, he also yelled, you're still shaking. Are you okay? And laughs. I posted this. Um, so let's watch this video. Prepare to get fucking mad at these goddamn bullies. Fuck these motherfuckers. Excuse me. I'm Back up. Yeah, you gotta get I'm gonna get any more I'm also going to play. Oh, get him back in my car. Back up. Back up. Get in my car. I'm sorry. I didn't ask them. I'm sitting right here. Sit in my car. Revon. Fucking bully. Watch it. Tell me. Back up. 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 Back well, look at the badge mm -hmm. number. Look at it. Yeah. yeah. Didn't do anything wrong, right? Uh huh. Why you put them in you the see that? Sure. Exactly. Look at her badge number too. Aww. That's so cute. And these people just standing around. I'm only following orders. Yeah, that's what they say at the Nuremberg trials. That ain't no old fucking excuse. <laughs> <laughs> Look at him, just walking up, trying to intimidate them all. They're doing nothing. They're literally doing nothing but standing there waiting for the bus. And this just reminds me, if you guys have never seen the documentary on Netflix about the Bloods and the Crips, it's really fucking interesting. It explains how the gangs got started, and basically they got started because the police were harassing black people and they weren't allowed to go certain places. They weren't treated like normal members of society, so the gangs formed for protection, basically, against the fucking police. And, uh, really interesting shit. Infuriating. Hopefully these people will be fucking fired. This should be mocked into existence. I'm really glad we have cell phones now. For the first time in history, people have power to actually fight back against this kind of bullshit. And I'm glad we're seeing more and more of this stuff. And I don't know if you guys see this or not, but, um, Apparently, there was a big black uh, conference where uh, a bunch of leaders in the black community were on stage, and Candace Owens was there. And I, I think this is T.I., the rapper T.I., and he basically owns the fuck out of her. And this, uh, this video clip has gone viral, so let's have a look at it. I am answering Which your question. Which period was America great that we're trying to replicate? Well, well, I, Which era was it? Tell me. I think I'll answer your question. Tell I'm, me. I'm ready to answer your question. Which era was it? What? Which era was so great? You, here's the thing that you guys are forgetting. America was actually one of the first... Slavery was all over the world. The all question. over the world. America was... I'm not, I'm not saying it's okay, so why are you saying, oh? Amen. America I was one of the first up, countries... I want to like you so bad. I she about to claim that America was one of the first countries to abolish slavery. Bull fucking shit, dude. Open a history book. No, it wasn't. And, and even if it was, how does that mean that the time period where Americans abolished slavery was a was the time America was great. No, it wasn't. It still wasn't great. It was fucking horrible for black people. It's always been horrible for black people in all the past time periods. What the fuck are you even talking about? I'm trying you're to so question. Smart. I want right, to like you so if much. I, can't the I want to hear you. I want to be able to hear them. If, 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 I want to be I able to hear them. If I can't answer the question and you're just going to boo when I say a, a slavery was all over the world, which is a fact, why are you booing a fact? Finish because you're point. making light of no, I'm not. You're making light I of haven't the gotten into my points. I'm not making of people that look like us. You can't All make right. light of that. That ain't nothing. You I haven't even over. finished the sentence. How am I making you light of anything? You started with some bullshit. Okay. <laughs> you started with some bullshit. You get him, Ti. I can't. Even, what's a Ti song? Is it uh, you can have whatever you like? Isn't that a Ti song? Get him, Ti. That was funny as shit. So. But she is still, like, it doesn't matter. Like, conservatives still think she won that. If you watch, uh, if you read her Twitter, or you watch her videos and look at the comments, they still say, oh, man, you owned all those liberals. You go, Candace. So, like, reality just has no bearing on these people whatsoever. It's really fucking depressing. And you got to see Tommy Lauren say this bullshit. Holy goddamn shit. Here's uh, Miss Freedom Tommy Lauren, who gets her clothes made in China and sells them to gullible idiots, is basically talking about we need guns so we can kill immigrants. You fucking bitch. I hate, I'm sorry. I know that's a gender slur. I'm sorry for that. But, uh, God damn it. 
So uh, Richard Chambers points out, 22 people were murdered and 24 others wounded in a mass shooting in El Paso just last month. The shooter was targeting immigrants. So let's see what Tommy has to say. Is she encouraging this behavior? I think she might be. Then you can't depend on the government to protect you at all times. That's what so many Americans forget is they put their safety and security in the hands of the government. The government is going to fail you. But the government, the, the, what I like about America is that we're the only country in the world where armed citizens are allowed just in case the government gets out of line. That makes America unique. It's one of the things that really appeals to me about America. Um, but you never hear about that. Well, that's what Second Amendment activists and right. people that are for the Second Amendment, Second Amendment rights, remind people over and over and over again that this is that your right, this is your right to protect and defend yourself and your family. And all the things that the Democrats want to put in place, my goodness, if they want to open our borders, you better be sure that the people in Texas, the people in South Dakota, the people in the middle of this country, we're going to be armed and ready because we have to have a means to defend ourselves from who knows who's coming in. That's the thing. We don't know, and we have to be able to protect ourselves. Uh, you can see Tommy Lowen get more. So, yeah. That's depressing. You wonder why these uh, mass shooters, white supremacists, are encouraged to do this, and who's encouraging them? Here it is, folks. This is the guy that said that Donald Trump has never told a lie on this show with this fucking fascist talking about murdering immigrants. How is this possible that this is on our network television, folks? But it is. Crazy as shit. These fucking white supremacist racists are just outly, outwardly saying it now. We need guns in case we have to kill a bunch of immigrants. Well, they're already doing it. Mass shooters are already doing it. And uh, apparently this guy woke up this morning and the Trump administration had photoshopped his picture into an America, uh, to a Trump 2020 hat. He says, woke up this morning to know I'm the new face of the 2020 real Donald Trump campaign. These motherfuckers, right? They couldn't find a single black person who was wearing a Trump 2020 hat. So they had to go find this guy and without his permission, photoshop a fucking Trump hat on him. So he needs to sue the fuck out of them, which is what they're all saying here. Uh, sue this motherfucker, sue them into the ground, and I hope he will. Uh, it looks like he's got a good lawsuit on his hands, and so I hope I, uh, I see Trump pay dearly for this. I think it was the Trump administration that put, put that out. Not 100%, but I think it was. And uh, this is kind of infuriating, too. These rich motherfuckers. This person said, in words, walking back to the private jets like it's Uber. And yeah, Kanye stopped in his private jet to give uh, DJ Khalid a new pair of his ugly-ass shoes. And... Uh, then they just walk back to their own private jets like, yeah, isn't it great to be rich? Isn't this awesome to be so fucking rich while everybody's hungry and dying with like a lack of health care? Aren't we awesome? This is the greatest life ever. Why do you support these motherfuckers? Why? These are not good people. I mean, I like Kanye's music. I'm a Kanye music fan, but I wouldn't support the motherfucker. Hell no, I wouldn't support this DJ guy either. Fuck these guys in my opinion, but maybe I'm just jealous. Let's see, we got uh, another 13 minutes. Let's cover the best of the best here for 13 minutes. Guess what shit on Steve McRae. Guess who Steve McRae is? Steve McRae is uh, that dude who used to be on Non Sequitur, and then the other guy, Kyle, stole the show from him. And so uh, I don't like either one of these guys. I don't like the Kyle guy because I think they stole the show from Steve. And even though I like Steve, I don't think you should steal things from people just because I don't like them. And I don't... Uh, I don't support thieves and fucking dishonest behavior like that. But this Steve guy is still a, kind of a dick shit, dipshit himself, a dick shit. Um, as a uh, Chupacabra 420 says, Steve McRae uses science to attack human rights of trans women athletes, showing his true anti HDW turf credentials here. Don't let these piss of shit gaslight you. He uses trans tokens to deflect his bigoted views and cashes in on the controversy for his chud YouTube audience. He's amalgamated. He's exactly what it is. This is a guy who claims he's a fucking uh, ally to trans people. That's what they always say. I'm an ally. I dare you say I'm not an ally. But here he's retweeting. They them isn't a gender. It's a fashion accessory for shallow twats who just want to cash in on the current fad of the victim bucks culture, which rewards narcissists for their public acts of self-absorption masquerading as some kind of virtuous activism. Hope this helps. And Steve retweets and says, Brutal, but reflects what I seem to see as well. Okay, dickhead, well, don't be claiming you're a fucking trans ally then, because this is why people don't think you're a trans ally. All right? We know you're not. We know by your fucking words you're not, okay? So quit, quit playing this card. J just admit you're not. This is why they don't see you as one. Like, there are a few trans tokens that he uses to, oh, see, this trans person agrees with me. I can't be fucking transphobic. But yeah, that's the same excuse that the racists who follow Jesse Lee Peterson's give. Hey, Jesse Lee Peterson, he agrees with me and he's black. I can't be racist, bullshit. You guys are racist. And Steve McRae is a transphobic dickhead. Fuck that dude and fuck non-sequitur and fuck all y'all, right? And, uh... 
This is beautiful. I guess Milo is so fucking desperate now that he's trying to find any way he can get attention whatsoever. So now he thinks he's going to troll furries. So he has created a fursana, and he has said that he is uh, registered to go to a big furry convention. And uh, the furry convention is like, fuck no. Fuck no. You're not going to come here. You're not going to make fun of us. You're not going to troll us. You're not going to use us as your cheap uh, fodder to get popular on, right? So you know it's bad when fucking even furries are canceling and deplatforming you, you fucking dickhead. Why don't you just fade into obscurity already, right? Nobody likes you, Milo. Nobody. Fuck off already. Your 15 minutes are way fucking over, dude. It's not going to happen again. Go get a job at Walmart like I was going to do, dude. They probably wouldn't hire you because you're a twat, but you know what I'm saying. And uh, this is some crazy-ass shit right here, folks. Holy fucking shit. Wait till you hear this. So this is Lars Larson, who is a right-wing shithead, has a right-wing shithead show for right-wing shitheads. And he has another right-wing shithead. He has a literal fascist on the show who is giving a shout-out to everybody and explaining to them exactly how their violent terrorist attack of them murdering Antifa is going to go. And he's basically trying to organize this live on the air. Let's listen. What is it, the detailed plan? Yeah, what is it? Okay. Uh, first, veterans join anti the social media pages and groups and get name of most active members of social media along with getting the arrest records from rallies and write down all the names they see um, as well as use arrest records. Uh, the veterans will use background check programs to find home ride addresses of all the members of Antifa using the intelligence they have gathered. The veterans will take a map of the cities with members of Antifa are known to live there. Grid overlays will be placed over the maps of the cities. The veterans will be broken down into squads. Each squad will be assigned its own grid and given a list of names and addresses in their assigned grid square. There is an app called Route For Me that can be downloaded on the phone with the GPS. It is an app that allows delivery truck drivers to enter into one, more than one address unlimited addresses and an app plot turn by turn the best route for the delivery truck driver to use to deliver the packages. The veterans would use Route For Me to find the most expedient route to hunt down the most violent members of Antifa in their beds at night until every one of them was gone in every city in America, if need be, in a single, well-coordinated night. The losses for Antifa will be catastrophic. Yep. Holy shit, folks. They're outright calling for terrorist attacks. Nazi-style terrorists. This is exactly what the Nazis did, right? What is it? The Night of a Thousand Blades? Is that what it was called? Where they went out and they killed all their opposition in the middle of the night? Crazy-ass shit, folks. We need to get the fucking FBI to lock this motherfucker up immediately. How is this being allowed? Fuck everything about these guys. Acting like Antifa are the violent ones. Like, name a fucking person Antifa has killed. Because I can name a fucking shitload that white supremacists have killed. To pretend like the violence Antifa commits is even fucking close is insanity. It's absolutely ridiculous. It's exactly the kind of thing that people like Armored Skeptic were spreading, right? Congratulations, Armored Skeptic. You're really adding to the social good with that kind of bullshit, aren't you? And, uh, oh, you guys ready to be mad? Let's see. I got seven minutes. So I'm going to play this clip, and then I'm going to um, play some palate cleansers to make us happy before we leave. But this is going to make you mad. Okay, I'm not going to play this. I'm going to skip that one because that one's just too upsetting for right now. Um, let's see here. This is kind of a cute one. Just a guy and his pet. Uh, what is this? Isn't that squirrel? That's a raccoon. Just a guy and his pet raccoon hanging out. But he has a secret to keep the raccoon from biting him. He's genius. Oh. Ow! Ow! Will you quit? Hannah Montana body spray. I read it from some Hannah Montana coon repeller. <laughs> spray that on him. And now, go ahead, bite me. Do it. Bite me. Do it. Bite me now. It's like, nope. Fuck that shit. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> That's disgusting. Now you smell terrible. Fuck that. 
So that's cute. Apparently this, this raccoon died, and apparently this guy has another raccoon, but then the government took his new raccoon from him. So that's sad. Just thought I'd make you sad there with the truth behind what happened. And uh, let's see. You guys hear about uh, Felicity Huffman? Talking about the white supremacist power structure in this country, folks, is a great example of it. Jamal Mitchell says, Dear white people, white privilege is real. You don't need a fucking yacht and an Ivy League degree and a spot in the suburbs for to apply to you. It fucking does regardless. And here's a great example. Tanya McDaniels lied about the school district she lived in so her six-year-old could go to a better school even though she was homeless. Sentenced to five years in jail. Felicity Huffman paid $15,000 to an SAT test administration to cheat on her daughter's test so her daughter could get into a better college. 14 days in jail. And this kind of shit happens over and over and over again. There's so many examples of this. You wonder why black people are so frustrated by the system? You wonder why black people don't feel like they're a, a part of the American system? Like they're outcasts? Like they don't want to be a part of the system? This is why, folks. They experience this shit every fucking day and it's up to the white people. It's up to us who have the power to acknowledge this problem and to destroy it to dismantle it and if you're not doing it you are part of the problem and uh here's what the largest anti-sjw forum in the world is like folks don't believe me just go to fucking facebook and look at this shit and this is not like a one-off this is like what the whole fucking thing is like first off they post shit just lies like this transgender model reveals secret relationship with colin kirkpatrick right just they're just trying to make fun of him anyway just trying to shit on him any way they can like i said uh Posting what the largest identity reform in the world is like, posting fake shit to belittle liberals, gays, and trans people. It sure would be nice if some of the YouTube stars who helped build this community would start speaking out against this. And you can look at the comments and the kind of things they have here. Without makeup, here's what the transformation looks like. Cap cruising the Hershey Highway. <laughs> There's no way he's the top. Laughing my ass off. Well, she's a guy, so Ooh, I'm going to throw up because it's a trans person. Everything makes sense now. Smelly. So he's an average liberal male. So in addition to taking a knee, he grabbed his knees as well. So he'll be biting a pillow during the anthem. Wouldn't surprise me. He would get fucked by a black guy just to feel black inside of him. It's just the most racist, homophobic, transphobic shit in the fucking world. That's what the anti sjw community is. And the fucking stars of this community who helped create this shit, where the fuck you at to call this goddamn shit out? None of you are fucking speaking out about this. I'm the only motherfucker talking about this, and I'm the one that didn't fucking help build this shit. So you guys need to make social pressure. You need to keep social pressure on these stars that help fucking build this and, until they actually start calling this shit out because they have a responsibility to undo some of this fucking harm they did. In my opinion, fuck everything about this. And, uh, hmm. Only got three minutes left. Let's skip ahead here. Palette cleansers. Let me read the super chats real quick. Last chance to get in your super chats. Please support the show if you have not done it. I really appreciate it. It's been real slow tonight. Better paid teachers improve next gen of society. Uh, sure. I think teachers do need to be paid more. I've seen Bernie Sanders' plan. I think he wants to pay teachers, what, $60,000 a year apiece? Uh, I think that's a really good idea. And that's the only super chat I got. Okay. Well, what you going to do? I thought it would be more popular tonight. I guess the topic doesn't appeal to that many people. What you guys got to say in the chat? Um, I ain't got no special treatment. Uh, you, you don't understand white privilege then, to be honest with you. White privilege doesn't mean that your whole life is going to be easy. It just means that your race is generally not used against you. And the society is set up to you know be more beneficial towards white people. And it is. It definitely is. Dusty will go from raising cats to raccoons. Uh, that's dangerous to me. They're cute, though. Uh, Dusty libertarians like Cokes are the only people who actually support open borders. I, I never really heard too many liberals talk about open borders, to be honest with you. I mean, more open borders, sure. There's plenty of room in this country for lots of people. The American dream is here to be had by all kinds of people, in my opinion. There's plenty of room, so bring them on in, in my opinion. Dusty feels the love. Hells yeah, I feel all the love. All right. Last show's getting your super chats. We're going to do a little few palate cleansers here. This kitty has a case of puppy love, and holy shit, here's some cute-ass shit for you folks. Oh, oh god damn it, oh fuck. Just hugging the shit out of these little puppies, yeah, he don't know he's a kitty. You just hug them all, god damn it. Oh, they're so fucking cute, looks like little penguin. Little cute shits. And, uh... Today I learned... That apparently the human mind was created for facial recognition. 
while the brains of chimps are actually specialized for butt recognition. So today I learned that apparently I am a chimp. Or I have a chimp brain for sure, because, uh, ooh, a booty. Imagine being a chimp. It's like, uh, what's up, Tony? It's like, oh, have we met before? Yeah, it's me, Bob. He's like, oh, I don't recognize you, Bob. And Bob turns around and shows his ass. He's like, oh, Bob. Hey, Bob. Didn't recognize you there, Bob. Nice ass, Bob. So apparently that's what it's like to be a chimp. Tells you, I dig that. And now, uh, let's see, what is this? Oh, God. W what is happening here? All of my... What? Yep, okay. I think this is a white girl, for one thing. Um, and uh, she appears to be... Um, dry humping the shit out of this dude. And... Uh, then he walks over here, and he's like, Yeah, get this crazy bitch away from me. And she's like, Nope. I am going to jump on your back. And she's like, yeah, ooh, get it. I'm on top now. Humpity, 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 hump. And, uh, yeah, somebody please give that girl dick stat because uh, she horny as fuck and need it immediately. She might die from like a dick. That's what I think. And uh, I've been drunk before, folks, but I ain't never been this fucking drunk. I don't know what these two folks are drinking, but uh, they should stop immediately. She peeing all in the fucking middle of the sidewalk. He peeing on the side. They just letting it all hang out. She just touched the pee. She almost fell over touching the pee. She's still just letting it all go. You guys couldn't have walked around here and peed in the grass or something. And yep, I, I think he might be a little drunk. That's just me. Maybe not. Maybe he's not. Uh, yeah, yeah, he drunk. Yeah. Let me just lay here in the middle of the street for a little while while my girlfriend pisses all over herself. That's cool and classy, guys. Mm, no, no. Might want to think about cutting back a little bit, you alcoholics. And uh, lastly, we'll finish with this one. This is a sweet story. A 70-year-old woman barely finished this marathon in time. It's 30-hour marathon. 100 fucking miles. Shit, man. I couldn't run like 10 miles. Much less a fucking 100. Much less when I'm fucking 70. Look how close this was. Here she is. People are supporting her. And that she got to make it before the time cuts off in, in order to qualify or whatever. And look at the time. She has 30 hours to make it. And uh, I don't know if you can see this, but... Yep, 29, 59, she makes it with like five seconds left. She just barely makes it. Love to see shit like that. That's heartwarming. Hope I am that badass when I am fucking 70 years old. Let me go finish up by reading the chats. Uh, do you have a link to that last video, Attack on Antifa Members? I just caught the end. Uh, Yeah, but I don't have it off the top of my head, sorry. Um, for the most part, I like what TJ has to say. Cool, cool, cool. Works for me. Here's Vadim's video. Good, all right. Let's check the regular super chat, see if I got anything. Uh, Night of the Long Knives. That's, is that what I said? I was close. I was really close. Uh, so thank you for that. And we'll finish it up by reading the chat. Uh, just for the liver alone. I know, right? Your liver is going to die, and then you're going to die. She own heat? Yep, definitely. Definitely need to impregnate her. Stat. She need a baby. Clearly. All right. Well, that's the end of the show, folks. I hope you fucking enjoyed it. I really appreciate you guys joining me tonight. I love you so much. I want to give a shout out to the special person out there who donated a little money to me so I can go buy Borderlands tonight. That was really fucking cool to you. And they had a special request on how I went in my show tonight, so I'm going to do that. But before I go, please think of supporting me. The Super Chats were very low tonight, which is okay. I very much thank all you guys who gave me Super Chats. But if you want to support the show, please consider doing so on my Patreon. Uh... Patreon.com for just podcast. A dollar or two a month really helps. Anything you can give really helps. Uh, I want to continue to do this. I think this is an important show. And if you agree, want to help me keep doing it, please think of supporting the show. And uh, most of the money goes to the Human Society of Mississippi Animal Sanctuary, where we rescue cute little cats and dogs. So it goes to good calls. And I shovel so much shit every day, folks. You have no idea. Like, good Lord. If you could only see how much fucking shit. I I'm not even, I'm not, it's not a metaphor. I literally have a big snow shovel. And literally every day, I shovel tons of shit. Because we have these seven fucking dogs who shit all over the place and I have to clean it up. So anyway, that's what I do with my time, but I enjoy it. Believe it or not, it makes me feel like I'm doing something good. So if you want to support that, please consider doing it. I will be back uh, Friday, right? Yeah, it's Monday. I'll be back Friday, 8 p.m. Central, 9 Eastern, for another episode of Filter Friday. We're going to bring that shit back. I hope you guys will join me then. I want to say I really appreciate all you guys who are supporting me. My 106 Patreons, you guys mean the world to me. Uh, just can't thank you enough. Love you guys. I will see you soon. And as always, till next time, Trans Rorts! Night, dudes. Thank you for joining me. Appreciate it.